there, but uh, you know, Georgia Southern has had uh, their schedule kind of uh kind of messed up and rotated as we kind of expected but they have added a game and they will host umass next saturday that kickoff is slated for four o'clock uh next saturday of course georgia southern was slated to uh, play app state of course that game got uh, postponed and moved so uh they had an opening and so they'll play next Saturday. And then Alabama and Ole Miss, uh, that kickoff uh, time has been changed. Um, they were originally scheduled to kick off at 6 o'clock Eastern time on Saturday. They are now moving it to 7.30 due to Hurricane Delta. Of course, uh, Hurricane Delta is set to make landfall late Friday night okay. um, in the uh, Louisiana area. So uh, the, the game has been moved back an hour and a half. So it'll be a 7.30 kickoff for Alabama and Ole Miss NFL news Chase Young the uh, big draft pick for the Washington football team returned to practice today also uh, Lamar Jackson uh, practiced today he had missed uh, a couple of days of practice this week due to uh, an injury so uh, as of right now that's what I've got all right good stuff the Braves just took a one nothing lead over the Marlins with a Marcelo Zuna single that gets Ronald Acuna in Atlanta up one nothing. If they win this game, they advance to the NLCS and await the Dodgers Padres winner. And that series is two nothing LA with game three coming up tonight at nine o'clock. At seven o'clock tonight, it's the Yankees and the Rays. And if the Rays win, they advance to the ALCS. At three thirty five, it's Oakland and Houston. Oakland stays alive with the win yesterday. Astros looking to put them away today at 335. We're getting closer to the Igo predicted Rays Braves World Series. He said that, uh, I think, before the season even started. So uh, that's still got a chance, although uh, the Braves got to win this one and then uh, they're not getting by the Dodgers. I'll go ahead and say the Dodgers are absolutely loaded and uh, will likely be representing the National League in the World Series. Great night tonight if you're a football fan. Uh, I'm intrigued by Tulane-Houston. That game's in Houston. It's Houston's first game. They have yet to play a game this year. So we'll see what Dana Holgerson's guys have as they take on Tulane tonight, 730 on ESPN. And then in the NFL, you can hear it right here on Pirate Radio, Bucks and Bears, a couple of 3 and one teams. I feel different about those three and one teams. Uh, I think the Bucks are going to get better as the year goes on, and we might have seen the best uh, from the Bears at this point, but we'll see that game in Chicago tonight. Travis Darno goes off the wall. Two runs will score, and Atlanta has taken a three to nothing lead as Darno is absolutely on fire during this series versus the Marlins. He has homered. The previous two games, a two-run double off the wall there. And Atlanta has a 3 nothing lead. Looking good right now in the third inning. Uh, Surely we will be here 3 o'clock on Saturday on the Bud Light pregame tailgate. Getting folks ready for ECU and South Florida. Our first night game of the year. Yeah, it'll be different. Uh, I'm not used to, uh, at least for this year, haven't had you know uh, a late night fifth quarter show so it looks like we're going to have one this week so we'll see what happens but uh looking forward to a night game get to sleep in a little bit on a saturday yeah we don't have to be here so early but we do yeah. have to be here later we got some uh, some positive news today as billy parker came by the studio to drop something oh, off yes. troy now, glenn he, hasn't uh, heard that yet he, t- he asked uh, hey what about some ribs on saturday yes. on saturday yes and uh, that made Shirley and I smile. Glenn has a grin on his face at the moment. You know, I don't know if you know this about ribs, but they will put you to sleep. Well. That could be problematic <laughs> during the fifth quarter. Could be some itis happening in the fifth quarter. <laughs> uh, honestly, the game could put us to sleep as well. But I joke. I joke. I, I do I think kid, it, I kid. it'll be a different type of game. And who knows what we'll see, but like South Florida's really struggling on offense. ECU wants to run the ball, but to have success, they might have to open it up. I don't know what kind of game we'll see, but I see a scenario where both teams kind of, you know, try to run the ball and then plod down the field and maybe make it a uh, a shorter game than we've seen in the past uh, without a bunch of passing. But who knows? We'll see. I'll tell you what, let's, uh, let's hear a little bit from Donnie Kirkpatrick, Shirley, uh, before we take our first time out. And kind of get his overall thoughts on the offense 
as uh, he was asked after he watched the film from Saturday, what were his thoughts on the offensive struggles? I think you you go back and you say uh, we got to go back to fundamentals, and you got to go back to being more simple because uh, you know Saturday was a disappointment uh, in a lot of ways, I guess, but just in what I'm involved with, it was a disappointment because we had we had a lot of MAs, mental assignments, mistakes, and uh, we we do have a young group. There's a ton of excuses, but nobody cares about that. You know what I'm saying? Who, who cares? You know what I'm saying? Uh, that was that bothered us a little bit right there. And then I, I don't know. I, we looked a little slow. I, I just thought we didn't have the energy that we had in the first game, and that was a little disappointing too. Uh, so there were there there was a lot of things like that, but you, you go back to fundamentals. There were there were some routes, for example, that guys that run good routes normally had gotten sloppy, and they the depth of the route wasn't good, the number of steps wasn't good. That throws the timing off. Uh, you know, we we had some issues with some protections, but it wasn't like uh, uh, it, it, the guy stepped the wrong way. You know, if it's you're supposed to step right. They stepped left. I mean, it was really just stuff like that that was disappointing. Now, good defense. They they do a heck of a job. They know that defense well. They brought a lot of good stuff, a lot of good stunts, a lot of good twists. So they challenge you. But we should have been better than that. Donnie Kirkpatrick there, kind of looking at the struggles and, and how he's going to fix it. And a big play could really help fix things. And that's safe to say for both sides, both offenses, USF and ECU struggling right now. But Donnie was asked, you know, how much a big play could spark the struggling ECU offense? A, a lot, especially with a team like us, because we are uh, so young, I guess. You, you, we'd have probably been somewhat young. You take, you know, Dante out of there, all of a sudden, our, our best offensive lineman, our most experienced offensive lineman, and he is our most energized guy, too. He brings a lot of energy to it. And, like, today at practice, he was out there giving some energy and doing some things, even not playing, but he, he wasn't there at the game, so you, you don't get any of that. Noah Henderson's been out for a while, too. I think Noah can can be that guy. So we are we're fragile. We're very fragile. The game, you know, got off to a crazy start. We uh, you, you gained seven yards on the first play. Okay, that's that's pretty good. That's kind of what we wanted to do. The game plan was Sneed was going to get the ball. We were going to get Sneed going, and you know, we were going to establish that. I was going to get him out of his little funk right there because he was really stressing, you know, after the first week and feeling like he let everybody down, which he did not. He, he didn't, you know, he didn't do that, but he was feeling that. He's a competitor. You gain seven yards, then we, we can't gain three yards in, in, in the next two plays. That's That was disappointing. You look up, you're behind. You keep getting more behind. You're not a team that's had a lot of success, so they don't have that confidence. And, you know, we, we had a couple of shots uh, to make big plays. We had two touchdown passes that one uh, – he got hit a little bit. He should have still made the throw. We uh, After we got a turnover, it was the perfect time to take a shot. And it could have been a 70-yard touchdown pass. That could have totally changed the game right there. And then series or two later, we had a double post. It was all basically uncovered. And we did we did blow a protection there. And, and he had to scramble. And he missed the throw there, too. And uh, you look back up because of, uh, you know, Snead on the, 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 the fake field goal with all the good blocking, too. You know, the O-line obviously did a great job of that, too, on the, on the line, blocking that. And then Blake Prohl comes to there and blocks a punt, you know. And you look, boy, you're back in the game. And, and there were so many ways we could have really been down to at least the last possession who's going to win this game. If we're going to have those two big plays back, you know, we, we, we really had a touchdown right before the half. He's an inch or two out. You know, he could have had a play there. C.J. catches one in the back of the end zone. He's about a foot out, you know, there too. Uh, three opportunities in the red zone that we settled for field goals. One of them, we had a first down and 10, and we made it a first and 20 with a hold. I never seen it held after the play was all over, but they still called it. So, I mean, he was holding, I guess, is a call. All right, there is Donnie Kirkpatrick uh, talking about – some of the issues really kind of detailing what went wrong and, and how close ECU was to, to putting more points on the board. Red zone has to get a lot better as uh, Jake Verity, uh, one of the most reliable kickers in the nation, but you don't want to rely on him putting up threes instead of sixes in those situations. All right, a lot more from Donnie Kirkpatrick, a lot more from Blake Harrell, and also Jeff Scott, the head football coach of USF. But right now, we'll take our first time out, come back. 
and talk to Brian North, WCTI 12. He'll join us on the other side, get his thoughts on East Carolina, South Florida, also the other action going on this weekend. That's ahead on Pirate Radio Live. We're back with you after this. Hidden phone trade-ins, hidden plan requirements, hidden catches. You won't find them at U.S. Cellular because we speak fair. Plus, when you switch right now, you can get $500 off the latest phones. Upgrade to fair. Upgrade to U.S. Cellular. Requires new postpaid service plan, new line port, and credit approval. Qualified smartphone purchase and comes via monthly bill credit on a 30-month RIC. Taxes, fees, and additional terms apply. This is Brandon Tate, owner and operator of Atlantic Wireless, an authorized agent for U.S. Cellular since 1997. Visit AtlanticWireless.com to find the store near you. We go beyond the call. The fun place to dine out with friends and family is Familia. Familia has something for everyone and offers favorites like New York-style pizza, lasagna, homemade meatballs, plus new specials like chicken parm alfredo, mahi fish and chips, chicken piccata, veggie burger, butternut squash ravioli, and more. If you need food to go, Familia's drive through window is open and ready for all takeout orders. Familia, Fire Tower Road near Pitt Community College and FamiliaNC.com. Hey guys, listen up. The next 30 seconds is very important because we have an announcement. Shimmer Boutique is your one-stop shop to make you look good and thoughtful. This is Ashley at Shimmer Boutique. We specialize in men's and women's apparel and also carry the biggest selection of local hats and jewelry. From Yetis to Hey Dudes, this is the place for you. Did I mention we also have free gift wrapping? Come check us out at our new location on Greenville Boulevard behind Starbucks. Shimmer is your one-stop shop for the whole family and we will always make your shopping experience easy and fun. Get your ice cold Bud Light, Bud Light Seltzer here. Even though you can't go to the game, doesn't mean the game can't be brought to you now here. Just go to BudLight.com slash delivery. That's BudLight.com slash delivery. Give me two bagels. Coming at you. It's a little short. Ow. Sorry. You know what? I'm just going to walk them over to you. Whenever there's a game to watch, there's a Bud Light there. Enjoy your response. Blaine Heiser Bush, Bud Light Beer and Bud Light Seltzer. IRC Beer, Beer in Texas, St. Louis, Missouri. Every team knows that the two-point play can be a winning move. That's why I'm here. State Farm agent Timothy Sawyer and my team are here to help you go for two by combining your home and auto insurance. It's a great call that saves you time and money. So go for the win and score some savings by combining your home and auto. It's just another way we're here to help life go right. Call me, Timothy Sawyer, at 493-0002 today. If you are push mowing your yard using an inefficient lawn tractor or your current zero turn spends more time in the shop than mowing your grass, it's time you look at a Hustler zero turn lawnmower. Residential mowers from Hustler are built like tanks and drive like sports cars. All Hustler mowers have fabricated welded steel decks. Don't settle on cheap units with flimsy stamped decks from big box stores. Come see Ron Ayers Motorsports. It will guide you to the right mower for your property and your budget. Find us at Ron Ayers Motorsports Highway 11 North of the airport in Greenville. 2020 certainly hasn't been the year many of us were hoping for, but one thing has stayed the same. I'm Tim Sutton with Greenville Auto World, and our commitment to our customers has never wavered. Let Greenville Auto World show you how easy it is to buy a quality used car in Greenville. We believe in fair prices, superior service, and treating customers right leads to satisfied repeat buyers. Your vehicle is a big investment, and our customers trust us to keep them up and running with outstanding service and value. With Greenville Auto World, cross some hardies at Bells Fork. When you don't have time to go to lunch, let Jimmy John's deliver lunch to you. With Jimmy John's, we can get a freaky fresh sandwich to you freaky fast. Click to order at jimmyjohns.com. Dinner's great. It's one of your top three favorite meals. You just don't want to have to make it. Well, with Jimmy John's, you don't have to. Whether you live in a sandwich delivery zone or head into the store, you can always get a freaky fresh sandwich. Click to order at jimmyjohns.com. This is Mike Houston, head football coach at East Carolina University, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation.
You're listening to Hour One of Pirate Radio Live. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. PRL this afternoon is brought to you by Bud Light, who reminds Pirate fans to always stay in the game and drink responsibly. Bud Light, the official beer of the ECU Pirates and proudly distributed by Carolina Eagle Distributing since 1989. Now, let's head back in to Pirate Radio Live. Here's your host, Cliff Brock. Alrighty, thank you, Shirley. Welcome back into Pirate Radio Live. Braves up four nothing in the third inning, but the Marlins threatening two on, nobody out, facing Kyle Wright in the third. You got more baseball coming up in just a little bit. In fact, uh, about twenty minutes from now, they'll get underway. Uh, Houston and Oakland with the Astros up two one in that series later tonight. It's Rays, Yankees, and Dodgers, Padres. Uh, A couple of football games tonight, and we're getting ready for a football game on Saturday as ECU will face South Florida down in Tampa. Coverage beginning 3 o'clock on the Bud Light pregame tailgate. Brian North will be a part of that program, as he is each and every week, and he joins us now on the Fixed NC Live line. North, how you doing today, man? I'm doing good, Clippy. Good timing. You got me out of practice. We uh, are implementing something new into our station, and apparently we have to practice. And I am from the Allen Iverson School of Practice. <laughs> if it's not for real, if it's not going out over the air or being taped to go out over the air, mm-hmm. I'm not really into practice. So thank you for rescuing me. That's why we don't we don't even tell Brian what we're going to talk about. We don't go over <laughs> you know, any conversations, what, any questions I'm going to ask you. We just get right to the game. No practice, Brian. No, no pra- practice. Practice. No, be practice. Talking about that's practice. Right too. And that's, you know, that's why I wouldn't do well like those national debates where they prep you for those debates. Nah, oh, man, let's just let's go out and fire from the hip, man. Let's do it the good old American way. Fire from the hip. All right. Um, on that note, Brian, what do you think about – I was trying to think of a random matchup coming up this weekend. <laughs> Uh, Florida, Texas A&M. What's the big storylines there in that game? What the hell? What the hell? What kind of show is that? <laughs> okay. You didn't tell me we are going to talk about that. <laughs> All right. How about ECU South Florida? You might know a little bit more about that one. Last we're week. We talk about that. Uh, <laughs> you know, it, it's kind of two desperate teams, right? Yeah. I mean, I, you can just tell with Mike Houston. I, I've enjoyed Mike Houston from his days at Lenore Ryan and, and uh, then at JMU, and he hasn't dealt with a whole lot of losing in his coaching career. And he's an intense dude, and you can just see at each Zoom session that he has, he's getting a little saltier, a little more intense, and he's just trying to... I saw this last year. I remember the old Dominion game where ECU got up to the lead, they started to blow it, and he was just so demonstrative on the sideline, just trying to will his team. He's trying to have them match his passion and desire because he knows that's what's going to going to take to be successful so he's really ratcheting up the intensity trying to drag his team along with him and so i've seen that this week and you know at some point like last year it's going to take hold because there is talent on the pirates roster it's going to be another tough road game we know what south florida did to ecu last year and so um i'm, I'm expecting this to be kind of a pick em type game i think this one will be a fourth quarter game uh, but I think it's huge for both schools who are trying to gain any kind of momentum they can for their season. I will take a fourth quarter game. We have seen too many that uh, have been over at yeah. halftime over the last several seasons, Brian. And uh, hey, you talk about Mike Houston there. He came out this week. I mean, he said, and we know that it's going to be, we're in the middle of a rebuild and it's going to take yeah. a while. On the flip side of that, though, kind of what you're speaking to, he expects there to be progress shown and. And solid games, games into the fourth quarter. And we've yet to see one of those this year. And, uh, you know, we, we hope we, we see one Saturday. But it's kind of – both can be true, right, that we're in a rebuild and we got to be patient. But, you know, people are tired of being patient and want to see some progress week to week. You know, what I think a lot of ECU fans forget is when ECU moved into the AAC. A lot of us thought it was going to be Conference USA 2.0. But it really has been a much tougher league, and it's been harder for ECU to find the bodies of Conference USA 2.0, bigger linemen, right, uh, uh, some of the faster uh, defensive players. And so even, ever since ECU went up in weight class to the AAC, there's been a struggle there trying to get the talent level up to what everybody else has, and I think they're still trying to do that to, to this degree. You can control your effort. You can control your attitude, and I think that's what Mike Houston is trying to instill right now. I think he would be okay if – you go out there, give it everything you have, execute perfectly, and still lose. I mean, he still wouldn't like losing, but you can be much more satisfied as a coach. You've gotten everything out of your players. And I think there's just too many mistakes that he's seeing that's driving him nuts that are correctable. Uh, I think there's there's uh, 
I don't know if he's questioning the effort, but you can always go another gear, right? And so I think he's just trying to get consistency from those sides of the ball, and then eventually the talent will catch up. They're young. I think they've done a really good job of recruiting, but we see this in other programs around the country, right? Unless you have exceptional freshmen, normally you like to slowly work them in. And, and with ECU, there's a lot of guys, uh, underclassmen, that are playing for them right now, and mistakes are going to happen usually uh, when you play those younger guys. But as long as they can get the effort and the attitude there and you show what it's like to get there, the talent will catch up, and then you'll be able to compete. And believe it or not, folks, uh, South Florida might be having more offensive issues than ECU right now. They've got yeah. kind of a mess in year one of Jeff Scott where he doesn't know who his quarterback is. I mean, they're going to start right. McLeod again, it looks like, and he played against ECU, and South Florida took it to ECU last year at Dowdy Fickman right. Stadium. Like but been trophy winner last year, right? Yeah, exactly. But, I mean, they've played three quarterbacks in multiple games this year, and we'll likely we'll, we'll hear some comments when uh, – Morgan Aylers joins us coming up in hour two from Jeff Scott, but looks like Brian, they're going to continue with that plan and, and roll out a bunch of quarterbacks on Saturday. Yeah, well, we'll see. And uh, my hope is Aaron Ramser gets to one of them because wasn't it the South Florida game he hurt his knee last year? And, hmm. and that'd be a nice full circle for him to come back as quickly as he has from that knee injury. And it was on a touchdown pass that South Florida had that he injured that knee. So uh, that would be a nice little redemption for him to get that. But look, whoever they trot out there, you know, it's about ECU's offensive line protecting Holton Aylers. Holton's good when he gets protected. Uh, he's not as good when he has to scramble for his life. And so, and the running game, they'd like to get a little more production out of that. You take care of some of those things, you control your destiny a lot better. Brian, let's look at uh, the ACC slate coming up on Friday night. It'll be Louisville, Georgia Tech. Then at noon on uh, Saturday, you got all the triangle schools involved, including Virginia Tech at North Carolina. The Hokies beat mm-hmm. Duke last week, did not look spectacular in doing so, uh, but they are an underdog going to Chapel Hill coming up mm-hmm. on Saturday. Could be a lot of points on the board uh, when those two, those two teams meet. Yeah, probably. You know, we're still trying to figure out what North Carolina is. They only have two games under their belt. They are very young as well. Matt Brown has done a great job recruiting, but they, the eyeball test says they just don't look like the eighth team in the country, right? I mean, they, there's talent there. They're just not cohesive yet. Uh, Sam Howell's been good, but he's, he's still not what you would call uh, Trevor Lawrence uh, quite yet, you know, with what he's got going on. Uh, they're getting that. You see the potential with North Carolina, but it also feels like they could take two steps backwards this week and lay an egg against the Virginia Tech team that has really been um, kind of poo-pooing it, you know, oh, what was us? We don't have players. We're down to our eighth-string quarterback. What are we going to do? And then they go out and they beat people. So uh, Virginia Tech's an interesting animal under Justin Fuentes. They're still trying to get his identity. They've got the new defensive coordinator this year. So there's still a lot of unknown with these Hokies, but they're winning ball games so far, and, and that's the important thing for them as they build under his brand. I watched the first half, Clemson, Virginia, and, and was impressed how Virginia stayed in that game. They were able to sustain drives and, and keep Clemson off the field, had a bad turnover and it kind of got away from them but they'll take on nc state this week and how about the uh the pack picking up a win and now they'll try to make it two in a row uh when they go to charlottesville and it's always interesting for them and and what is the same thing we're still trying to figure out who these teams are and what is nc state we know they're high scoring and porous defense uh but they had a a real quality win at pittsburgh i was really impressed with Devin leary and how he led that fourth quarter comeback because that's not something we've seen him do before. We've seen him make mistakes. So I thought that was a big point for him. Now, how does he re- rebound this week and respond going to Charlottesville? Bronco Nagurski knows how to coach. He's done a really good job at UVA <laughs> setting that foundation. Bronco uh, Mendenhall. Good... Uh, nice. Uh, Bronco Nagurski. That was a, uh, a throwback oh, yeah, Bronco, there. Yeah, that. Bronco <laughs> Mendenhall. Sorry. Bronco Nagurski is looking down saying, yeah, that's pretty good. Bronco <laughs> Mendenhall uh, has done a really nice job of uh, of, of getting that that foundation of defense back in there again yeah. and, and they've got some good parts in play they just got to figure out some things offensively oh and for duke is a road favorite in the carrier dome against syracuse that just looks crazy, funny huh? on paper yeah and yeah, uh crazy. and then the headliner uh if it was 20 30 years ago would be florida state at notre dame that is not the case mm-hmm. this year it is miami at clemson uh and the tigers of course are a couple of touchdown uh, favorites over the u but a, a big spot here for De'Aaron King in Miami to maybe prove their worth. And, you know, Clemson hasn't – I don't know. They don't, they don't play down to their level of competition. I feel right. like they could beat these teams worse than they've beat them so far this right. year, Brian. But this will be their first real test of 2020. 
I don't think Dabo is really wants his team peaking in September. So yeah. I, I think they you, you see where they kind of slip up a little bit. It's always early in the season if they do at all. And I think he's trying to get his guys to peak. His defensive linemen, his freshman defensive linemen have been so impressive. And he's talked about how this recruiting class, this freshman class, may be the best he's ever had. And that's saying something when you've won a couple of national titles. But uh, they've got a lot of parts that keep are going to keep getting better every game. And I just feel like offensively, they're really not showing much yet they're just kind of playing basic and knowing that uh that they can win these games and i think they like staying in these games a little bit to sharpen the sword some you're getting all these blowouts early you're i don't know what that's doing besides building some depth possibly but i think for Dabo, he wants his his newer guys to get some more playing time out there so i don't think they've really unleashed everything yet maybe they do this week because miami is a dangerous uh team uh with the eric king coming in which we've we've seen what he can do uh when he was in the aac multi-threat quarterback really getting better in the pocket so that is the headliner i'm curious about that one do we still call florida state and notre dame is it still the catholics versus the convicts is that still still how that one works well that was uh that was notre dame miami back in the day oh, I believe. Was, yeah you are correct yeah yeah uh, we're not yeah. calling this game anything this year because florida state oh, is freaking bro- like a Bronco Nagurski game or something. <laughs> that the practice creeping in. That practice sesh really threw Brian off his game today. I got to tell you. Uh, <laughs> practice. This is why we practice. Okay, well maybe you'll jump on board with me with my my hot take. Uh, two weeks in a row, Brian. I'm saying it. Panthers 0 and 2 with McCaffrey. 2 and 0 without him. Are the Panthers better without Christian McCaffrey? Nobody will jump Not. on board with me here with this uh, outlandish <laughs> comment. We we've, we've we've seen this before though. When a star player goes down, other people step up their responsibility. Instead of standing by and watching C Mac, which by the way, did you see the pictures of his new mansion he has on Lake Norman? I have not. A favor and, and look at the he just bought this new mansion on Lake Norman, which is the shoe closet in it is absolutely ridiculous. Chandler's but, nodding his head over there, so yeah, I'll have to check that out. Yeah, it, it's just nuts. So, uh, and I'm joking, obviously, with my, my McCaffrey. Uh, Bill Simmons uh, calls it the Ewing theory. Like, when Patrick Ewing would get hurt, the Knicks right. would play better. Like, he says yeah. somehow. So, one of those right. things. Because, because all of a sudden, you feel like you have to pick up the slack. And we see that. You see it on the radio, right? I mean, now that uh, you're not sitting in the shadow of uh, Troy and Ellerby, right? You're a much better radio guy because you've had to pick up the slack and, wow. and, and be better without them. What, a, what an analogy. Out. Yeah, very well done there. <laughs> and Brian, but... but By the time this game kicks off on Sunday, the Panthers might be a favorite over the Falcons. The line is trending that way. And uh, look, when they signed Bridgewater and Robbie Anderson, they kind of said, okay, we're not completely like blowing this thing up and trying to lose every game. They're going to be competent offensively. And if their defense plays like they've played the last couple weeks, they're going to win some more games in uh, 2020. So, what they're basically doing defensively is they're just playing back and and letting everybody complete passes in front of them and not letting big passes go over their heads and and they wait for you to make a mistake and and the Falcons have done that plenty. I think if you're a Panther fan you've seen and been a part of this before you go into Atlanta as a favorite and it doesn't work out very well. Anytime you're a favorite going into the game against the Falcons it never seems to work out for the Panthers. So you want to be the dog? You want to be the underdog? I would urge caution on on this game. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Brian North joining us on the Fixed NC Live line. North, uh, what you got planned for the weekend? Uh, nursery number two needs to be put together. Deadline's coming. Wait, what does that mean? Means uh, uh, terrorist number two is, is uh, due in December. Uh, did I not let you know that yet? Is this breaking news? Wait, you're you're doubling down? Yeah, I didn't know that. COVID kid, man. Okay. <laughs> COVID kid. <laughs> That uh, work at home stuff, man. The worst superhero you. name of all time, COVID kid. <laughs> hey, it's the COVID kid. Well, Brian, congratulations, man. I didn't know that. That's great. Well, thank you, sir. I guess maybe in, in uh, dealing with terrorist number one, we've maybe maybe neglected number two a little bit. It's going to definitely be second child syndrome with this one because. <laughs> so so when my wife and I we had the maternity pictures done, you know, the first time on the beach, and she wore two different dresses, one at Fort Macon, one at the beach. And we said, we joked at that time, haha, maybe we'll just tell one kid that they're in this dress and the other in that. And it's really <laughs> coming to fruition. We're like, when do we have time for this? So oh, wow. we, are, we are enacting plan, we may be enacting plan B of, yes, uh, terrorist number one was in the red dress, terrorist number two, you were in the, the white dress. Wow. Everything is fake. Everything's entertainment to Brian North, the <laughs> the Hollywood lifestyle. Nothing is real. Well, that's great, man. I had no idea, so... Uh, yeah, December. We've got a due date of December, so um, we'll see. Hopefully we make it. And 
you know, I'm a deadline guy, so nursery number two, uh, I guess, needs to be put together here pretty quick. So Red Redbeard on Twitter says COVID North. You could do like COVID or COVID. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, you got any names or anything? Pick. You got? Do you know the uh, boy or girl? What do we got? So we do, and and I knew a long time ago the only the only children I would ever ever produce would be females so it is a, it is another oh wow. lady, so well we're hoping that they'll be best friends and uh That's we great. do have a name we do have a name picked out it's a, it's my wife's uh maiden name of taylor okay beautiful awesome well north uh you made me smile here with that news here on this uh thursday so i told you not to let the terrorists win and now they're gaining hidden numbers so you're in real trouble but <laughs> look i was outnumbered when it was one to one in my house if you know what i mean yeah so I, I'll, i will never have a majority in that household good luck with all that all right yeah. brian uh appreciate it man we'll check in with you uh coming up on saturday in the middle of your nursery number two building all right clippy let me get back to practice <laughs> see you man there's brian north yeah. All right, that's cool. He did uh, that's some breaking news there, Shirley Rhodes. I didn't know that. Did you know that? I mentioned it to you before. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot. I just don't listen. When did you win? Gosh, like, this was ages ago. Really? Yes. Okay. Well, look. it goes to show you how much you listen to me during the day when I'm at work. <laughs> when Shirley talks, I just nod my head and say, "Okay, all right, <laughs> cool, all right." <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay. Well, uh, sorry for not paying attention to you, Shirley. It's all good. Let's take a time out. We'll come back. We'll visit with the BMOC, the big man on campus, Jeff Nadeau. He will join us. And uh, we'll talk about tonight's action. A little Tulane Houston. Bears Bucks. And more. That's on the way on Pirate Radio Live after this. Hello, Pirate Nation. This is Representative John Bell, the Majority Leader of the North Carolina House, and it has been an honor serving the people of Eastern North Carolina the last eight years. I've had the privilege of working with your local representatives, Dr. Perrin Jones and Chris Humphrey, as they delivered hundreds of millions of dollars in COVID relief funding to our small businesses, health care providers, and families right here in Pitt County. Unfortunately, their opponents are funded by radical, liberal, out-of-state donors that want to destroy our agriculture heritage, defund the police, and silence your voice by buying this election. This is not North Carolina. We cannot and will not let this happen. Dr. Perrin Jones and Chris Humphrey are focused on solutions, not revolutions. They will make sure your voice is heard and represent our Eastern North Carolina values. So Pirate Nation, the choice is clear. On November 3rd, please support and vote for Dr. Perrin Jones and Chris Humphrey for the North Carolina House. Strong voices for Eastern North Carolina. Paid for by the John Bell Committee. Domino's week-long carry-out deal means you can carry out three topping pizzas for $7.99 each every day. That's right, $7.99 each, and every day means any day. But just in case there's any confusion, we've set up a helpful website to confirm if today's a day you can carry out three topping pizzas for $7.99 each at Domino's. Just go to HowAboutToday.com to find out if Domino's week-long carry-out deal is valid today. Spoiler alert, it is. Carry out only. You must ask for this limited time offer. Prices, participation, and charges may vary. Excludes extra large and specialty pizzas. Crust availability varies by size. In studio today with Dr. Shondell Jones from Kinetic Physical Therapy, how can you help people with back pain? Well, you know, most people are going to have back pain at some point during their life, but you don't have to live with it. A bad MRI or a bad x-ray does not mean you're destined to always have pain. We have specialists that are well-trained to find out what the true problem is and the true source of your pain so they can get you on track to feeling better. So don't suffer with back pain. Our nationally board certified specialists are here to help you. To learn more, visit us at kptonline.com. We can help you live well, move more and hurt less. Hey Pirate fans, the Papa John's menu has grown again with the all new grilled buffalo chicken papadilla. The papadillas are part sandwich, part pizza, and are only $6. Choose from the all new grilled buffalo chicken, Philly cheesesteak, Italian, pepperoni meatball, and barbecue chicken and bacon, all for only $6 each. Also for a limited time, get any large five topping pizza for only $13.99. Place your order today online at papajohns.com and sign up for Papa Rewards. Papa John's the official pizza of the ECU Pirates. Hi, this is Luke Keekley. Last season, I was captain on defense. This season, since so many of us will be watching football from home, I'm football watching with Pepsi. And you know me, I pour everything I've got into it. Ah. All right, football watchers, let's do this. Opening click-offs. Here we go. Click on, 
click off. Click on, click off. Stretch that thumb. You can't have finger fatigue bringing you down in the postseason. Nice job. And my favorite, second half sip offs. Pepsi's up, lift, pull, open. Mmm, ice cold Pepsi and watching football. Nothing better. It's not game day without a delicious, refreshing Pepsi, the official soft drink of the National Football League. Head to your nearest retailer, grab your Pepsi before kickoff, then sit back, relax, and cheer on your favorite team. Pepsi, made for football watching. Hidden phone trade-ins, hidden plan requirements, hidden catches. You won't find them at U.S. Cellular because we speak fair. Plus, when you switch right now, you can get $500 off the latest phones. Upgrade to FAIR. Upgrade to U.S. Cellular. Requires new postpaid service plan, new line port, and credit approval. Qualified smartphone purchase and comes via monthly bill credit on a 30-month RIC. Taxes, fees, and additional terms apply. This is Brandon Tate, owner and operator of Atlantic Wireless, an authorized agent for U.S. Cellular since 1997. Visit AtlanticWireless.com to find the store near you. We go beyond the call. Pirate Radio! 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 Pirate Radio. Radio. listening to Hour 1 of Pirate Radio Live. Now, back to the show. Well, welcome back. Grab your amigos and head to Chico's for the best Mexican food and fun in Greenville. Come and enjoy favorites like shrimp tacos, steak and chicken fajitas, burritos, enchiladas, ACP, and more. Follow Chico's on Facebook and Instagram for daily updates. For Mexican food and fun, it's got to be Chico's for dine-in or to-go. As we head back into Pirate Radio Live, Cliff, I've got a couple of uh, news here for you. Uh, Kansas football coach Les Miles has tested positive for COVID. He is currently in isolation. It says he will handle his coaching responsibilities remotely. And uh, as of right now, no other coaches on his staff have tested positive. So as long as uh, everything goes according to plan, he will return to his coaching position on October 17th. And NFL News, the Chargers have officially named Justin Herbert as their starting quarterback moving forward. Of course, uh, Herbert had to take over for Tyrod Taylor after his lung was accidentally punctured by a team doctor in giving him some medication. So uh, that's what we have so far. Go Chargers. I wonder if Les Miles still chews grass in these COVID times or if that... If there's too many germs on the grass. I would imagine it'd be too many germs. He was a big grass eater uh, at LSU. All right, let's uh, talk about the action tonight and this weekend with the big man on campus, Jeff Nadeau, who joins us on the Fixed NC Live line from Barstool Sports. Big man, how you doing today? I'm doing well, Clip. How are you? Hey, doing great. Looking forward to a, uh, a good sports night and a good sports weekend with a lot going on. And appreciate you taking time away. I know you got a big peace treaty uh, you're involved in right now, Jeff, but... Thanks for giving us a few minutes of your time with everything you have going on. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'm in the <laughs> middle of a sit-down right now, or I'm trying to attempt a yeah. sit-down. Um, it's no coup either. It's a true sit-down. So we'll see. Um, you know, look, I'm going to say this for the first time pretty publicly. Um, this is very real. I, I, I'm i not even kidding. This isn't shtick. This isn't like, a, you know, any game. I'm... I'm actively looking to do this. I think it would be truly a, a great experience. I think it would do really well. Um, we'll see how it goes. It's actually an idea that I've um, thought about introducing for a while. And um, we'll see. Uh, but uh, appreciate having me on as always. For folks that don't know, uh, if you're into Barstool Sports and the comings and goings there, you know what we're talking about. If not, uh, a potential meeting of the minds uh with jeff nadu and uh an individual named rico bosco that would just be legendary if it came to be during the college basketball season so stay tuned uh for that folks jeff uh coming up tonight a game that uh we've talked about a lot this week and there's a couple of games this weekend jeff one tonight one saturday temple who you know quite a bit about up there in philly playing their first game of the year and they're a slight favorite over navy and then tulane who has played uh, a lot of football this year i think three games they, they could be three and zero if not for the uh the navy comeback 
uh, that we saw. The midshipmen came back and beat the Green Wave. But uh, Tulane tonight, a uh, what, a six and a half? That's what I saw at last point dog against Houston playing their first game. So for some of these teams, it's week one. Uh, Houston is one of those teams. And I don't know. When I first looked at it, I, I thought that line maybe should be four, something like that, six and a half. I pushed it up to seven. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with the Green Wave tonight. You got any interest in that game? Yeah, I do. I was, I was actually, frankly, wildly surprised at this total. I thought we would see a total at 65 here, uh, but not, 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 not at all. Um, you can get 59 at, 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 uh, at the book right now. So, uh, you know, I look at this and I say to myself, you know, Houston hasn't played. Uh, but I have to imagine they are giddy and ready to go. Um, they've been practicing. They've been doing their thing. Uh, we know what Dana Holgerson's offense is all about. And you, know, you look when you look at Houston. Um, you know this is a team that has a very competent quarterback. Clayton Toon is a good player. He's a guy that has had experience. Um, he's going to cut down on some turnovers, but you know, they have a good run game. They have some solid receivers. Um, this is a team that has plenty of weapons. They always have very good receivers. And Tulane. You know, we, it's kind of been a weird season for them. Uh, at times, I thought they've looked pretty bad defensively, particularly in the second half against the Naval Academy, um, even against Southern Miss. I know they only gave up 24, but you know, Jack uh, Abraham threw for 300 yards. Um, you know, they were able to have a 100-yard receiver in that game. And one thing about Tulane, you know, they made a quarterback change to Michael Pratt, and uh, their offense hummed a lot more. They were able to run the ball effectively. Uh, offensively, they were to have some big hitter plays. They had a 42-yard touchdown catch. So, you know, 59 is just too low. I mean, I don't need 70 points here. Uh, give me, you know, you know, 33-27, something like that, uh, 35-28. I don't need a crazy wild score here uh, for this one. These teams are going to go up and down the field, but I'm willing to think both of them will, will do some good things on the ground, kind of beat each other up. Uh, and um, find their way to 30 points each. Jeff, expecting some points tonight on Thursday Night Football with the Green Wave taking on the Cougars of Houston. Big man, what about Temple? Uh, well, what's the the talk up there, if any? They're, they're kind of, you know, with UCF, and of course UCF lost to Tulsa, but SMU, nice win over Memphis. Uh, Cincinnati doing their thing with a high-ranking. Temple kind of there in the middle, I guess, lost in the shuffle in the American. What, what's the story on the Owls for 2020? Yeah, you know, I, I think it's one of excitement uh, from an offensive standpoint. Um, you, know, you look at the quarterback, you bring Anthony Russo back, you bring back most of your offense. And, you know, defensively, I think there's going to be some growing pains. But, you know, one thing about this team and, and, you know, coaches of the past and even now with Rod Carey, they've always been solid defensively. Look, they've had to take some losses, but you know, they're always going to have a solid defense. Uh, I think this is a Temple team that, that's really going to fly offensively. I have no reason to have issues there. I think from a weapon standpoint, they have plenty of options. They have a really good receiver core, uh, and as I said, a quarterback to, to kind of fall back on. You know, in this game, though, uh, you know, we continue to talk about Navy. I mean, I, I, look, Clip, I, I, I'm going to tell you right now, defensively this team sucks. I mean, they, they are not good on that side of the ball. Uh, they have looked horrible. They've given up 40 points a game this season in three games. Air Force did absolutely whatever they wanted last week. And, Clip, I, I think it's important to say, Air Force was dealing with 40 opt-out or you know deciding not to plays this year uh, due to COVID and due to some of the eligibility things. Navy was not coming, or Army or Air Force was not coming into that game particularly strong defensively or that strong Offensive, they had a backup quarterback. Uh, that was ugly last week, and I have no reason to think that anything's going to change here. The difference between this week and last week for the Naval Academy is they're going to get uh, Dallin Morris back. Dallin Morris, for some reason, uh, wasn't reported to be on the injury report all week, and then all of a sudden, 10 minutes before game time, he was ineligible and didn't make the trip. So I, I think this is another game we see points, and i got to be frank, I think the Temple Owls come out here and get the job done. Uh, I just don't think Navy's very good. 
Real quick, Jeff, for our Pirate listeners, uh, ECU and, and South Florida, it looks like that line and total has settled in. Not a lot of change. We might see some late change on game day, uh, game night. But four and a half, South Florida's favorite total at 55. Talked about it a little bit with you on Monday. But any anything here with the side or the total uh, for this game? Yeah, I actually give you one better. Uh, if, if I were if I was going to play this game, I, I would take uh, East Carolina money line. I, I wouldn't worry about the points here. I'm not saying that um, I'm expecting a big time uh, win here. I think they can win. I think the values on the money line. I don't think South Florida is very good either. Uh, and I do have some excitement about ECU still. I do think they have a good and competent quarterback. I like their running back. I like. Yeah, I like Chase Hayden. I thought that was a nice transfer uh, grab. And I think receiver-wise, they are solid. C.J. Johnson, you know, Pro. it's a decent receiver core. I just think they have more weapons. I don't think Jordan McLeod's a very good quarterback. Um, this is going to be a much simpler game. Obviously, there's going to be points in this game. We know ECU can't uh, necessarily stop a lot of teams. But you've got to wonder, at some point, Mike Houston's going to get through to this group. I can't figure he's been very happy. In fact, I know he's probably not been happy with the level of intensity on defense. Um, I'll, if, if I were to play this game, which I probably won't, I would probably take EC on the money. And I think the value is either there or it isn't. Talking to the big man on campus, Jeff Nadeau from Barstool Sports today here on Pirate Radio Live. Jeff, uh, before we move on to NFL, uh, any game or two uh, you're looking at for Saturday in college football? Uh, yeah, you know, I think, um, obviously the big game's interesting, Clemson and Miami. Um, this is Miami's first real, um, test. Uh, they have played, you know, mostly, you know, bad to poor teams. Uh, now you step up and play arguably the best team in the country and a team that most people believe will win the, uh, college football playoff. Public dogs, I've said to you before, generally die. Um, and I would kind of have that thought here. Uh, I, I don't think I, – look, I like Miami. I, I think quarterback play is really good for them. I think offensively they're going to do some good things. But from a analytic standpoint, the third down stuff isn't great. I think defensively they could miss some of the players they lost last year. Uh, I have some concerns here about Miami here. But this is a big spot for them. We'll see if they can come and shot. Clemson hasn't exactly been – uh, great uh, against the number. But, look, if this somehow is at 14 or 13 and a half, I would lean uh, with Clemson. One other game, not necessarily going to move a lot of wavelengths, but it's time to start believing, folks, in the Brigham Young uh, Cougars. Yeah. This is a very good football team. Uh, Clip, if you remember, and I know you remember, over the last couple of years, last five, seven years, they've always been that plotting offense, quarterback plays not been great. Yeah. I've always had a pretty good defense. Well, the good thing now is they have a good defense and they have a really good offense. Zach Wilson is going to go down as one of those great BYU quarterbacks. They haven't had one in a while. He is one. Um, When you're laying 35, you've got to score a lot of points. They can do that. UTSA is a team. This is a major step up for them. And last week's opponent, Louisiana Tech, is better than UTSA offensively. Uh, BYU was able to win 45-14. Obviously, I'm going to be all over the um, team total for Brigham Young. I want to see if this number drops a little bit. I could have some interest in getting on BYU. The problem here for betters is odds makers have completely caught up to the Cougars. Yeah. The last three games, 14, last week 24, now 35. So yeah. They're catching up. Yeah, we're calling them Mormon Bama because not only are they winning, they're just <laughs> destroying. I mean, they're dominating Jeff and yeah. it's like you want to take overs in these games, but they're not allowing any points. Like the other team's not helping uh, with these overs because BYU's been so great defensively. So that's a great point. Last week, um, if you watched the game, that game was seven seven at the end of the first quarter. BYU put up twenty one in the second quarter. They're up twenty eight seven half. And I got to tell you, I'm going to have some interest in this uh, first half number. I'm yeah. going to think we're going to. We're going to get it around 20, 19 and a half, maybe even under that. I'll probably I'll probably get on this first half. This is a tough trip uh, out to um, the, the mountains out there. Uh, you, as you said, I mean, we know Alabama. You kind of want to maybe avoid them full game, but they don't bring them young allow much, and they score at this point so quick. I mean, last week, Zach Wilson clip was 24 for 26. 325 yards and two touchdowns. He also ran for 43 yards and had a couple touchdowns. So, uh, and the kid's playing at a, a wildly high level. 
All right, uh, Jeff, tonight, Thursday Night Football, you can hear it right here on Pirate Radio. This number has come down, I think, mostly due to a lot of injuries on the Bucks side, but the Bucks are three-point favorites, a uh, minus-120 beside that three, and an even plus three for Chicago, and a total at 44.5, so a low total compared to what we've been seeing. Any interest in the uh, the Thursday nighter, a couple of three-and-one teams going at it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um... I would look no other way but under the the number if if I were playing it, you know. And I think obviously this year that that's tough. I mean, it, it's not easy to bet unders in the NFL. You look at all this, you know, through a few weeks here, four weeks, unders are twenty six and thirty two. Uh, that's it's basically sixty forty losing. So it's not been easy. But you, know, you look at these teams when you start with the Bucks. They have some injuries themselves with Godwin, Fournette, you know, uh, OJ Howard. You know, maybe Mike Evans and Scotty Miller, they've been banged up. Um, they're probably going to play. But, you know, the offense right now is there, but I don't think it's great for Tampa. I don't love Tom Brady. I've said that many times. And we know how good the Bears' defense is. It's always very good. Uh, and you look at their defense, the Bucks. It's actually been a lot better than I thought. I don't necessarily worry a ton about what Nick Foles is going to throw at me. And the problem that the Bears have is they don't have much waiting in the wings either. Uh, I just think, for me, Thursday night games tend to be a little slow. The pace isn't necessarily there. Um, we're kind of above that 42, 42 and a half number, which I like. I think this game's likely first to 24 will win. Um, I think it's probably 23, 17, uh, maybe, you know, something where maybe the, the Bucks find a way to get into the 20s and mid-20s, but I don't think the Bears are good for it. They really struggled last week against a Colts defense that's good, um, but I think the Bears are, are, are solid as well on that side of the ball. And pace, it's not there in this game. Yeah. Uh, Tampa Bay 16th in the NFL in pace. A Chicago 20th, so you're not going to have a up and down offense. Jeff, you've uh, looked at lines almost your entire life, and and this probably doesn't happen happen often, but you had a case this week where a team makes a quarterback change to the backup quarterback, and that side actually gains a few points. Uh, the Rams now a seven point favorite against Washington. I think the number was higher than that, but they make the move from uh, Haskins to Allen, and it makes sense to me. I, I'm not you know, doing backflips for Kyle Allen by any means, but he definitely gives them a better chance to move the ball than what Haskins was doing. Haskins looked awful, but Rams, a seven-point favorite in that. Also, Joe Flacco in a quarterback for the Jets. They're seven-point dogs to the Cardinals. Uh, Just throw it out. Hey, Battle of Pennsylvania uh, this weekend as well. Eagles, a touchdown underdog against the Steelers. Anything else uh, catching your eye this Sunday? Yeah, the Rams... uh, uh Washington game's interesting. Obviously, I think Kyle Allen does inject a little bit of life into that team, but I'll tell you what, um, we've seen some really good defensive performances from this Rams group. I mean, outside of that Bills game, we have to remember that they're basically one first half away from having a really good defensive season so yeah. far. Um, they're really good against the Eagles, really good against the Cowboys, and um, they shut down the Giants, which isn't that difficult. But I think that the Redskins present a similar type. I mean, let's be honest, Kip, who would you rather have a quarterback, Daniel Jones or Kyle Allen? I'm going to go Daniel Jones. Um, so I, I think, for me, 45 seems a bit high. I don't know if it'll be 17-9, but I could see something like, I don't know, 27-13, 27-10 here, 24-10. I don't think the Redskins are going to be infused real, real, a lot really, but, uh, you know, and you're starting to get to a point where what t- at what point do the Rams become viable? As you said, if this line was nine early in the week. It's down to seven and a half. It won't surprise you if at kickoff this is a seven-point number or even maybe lower. So, hmm. yeah, that's one I definitely have my eye on the side in total there. Um, you know, I, I'll tell you, one bet I did make already um, – you know, it wasn't a crazy high bet because I kind of missed out on the number, but I actually grabbed the Carolina Panthers, and the number's going up a little bit, and I'm probably going to bet it if it gets to two again. At what point do we just kind of understand that Atlanta sucks? <laughs> I mean, how many chances are we going to give this team? At what point do we say, yeah, they're just not any good? I mean, I think Dan Quinn is is a walking, um, you know, a walking dead kind of guy. I, I think he's gone. This defense sucks badly uh offensively they just don't have that many weapons what happened to calvin ridley the other night was he on the field the other night brutal that green bay brutal yeah, no mean, catches 
Julio Jones is out, this team just allows so many big plays. And I'm going to tell you, Carolina's been showing me something. Last week was impressive. I really liked what I saw out of that offense. Teddy Bridgewater, just the guy gets no respect, but I really like him as a quarterback. He's just a soothing kind of guy. He makes, I think, a lot of the players feel kind of ready to go. He can move you down the field. Their skill position players have done a nice job. Robbie Anderson's been a nice addition. And, again, I'm going to keep saying this. This defense is a buy-on group for me. I know they're not going to, you know, the numbers aren't going to wow you, but this is, what, two straight weeks where they've looked pretty damn good defensively. Um, It's going to be a test this week, but I think Atlanta's dead. Jeff Nadeau joining us on the Fixed NC Live line. Jeff, we hope to see you uh, Sunday on the stream. You got plans to be in Philly? Yeah, you know, I got to check in with Dave here in a little bit. Um, I, I would imagine I will be. I know they'll be down there. Okay. Uh, last week, it was just kind of a, a scheduling thing as far as no one was really around. They were kind of doing some trips and stuff. But, yeah, as far as I know, I'll be there. Um, I'm, I'm working on some things next week with Barstool Breakfast and some of the other uh, things. So, you know, we're just kind of, you know, trying to keep yourself out there, put put blogs out, put content out. Uh, I put a blog out early this week about bloggers at Barstool. So, yeah, it's um, it's fun. I'm having a good time with all of it. Um, we keep kind of working in. College basketball will be here soon. So, uh, yeah, it's fun. Seven weeks away from college basketball. That's pretty wow. exciting. And Check you out. Yes, sir. And, uh, and actually less than. I think the uh, – it's uh, the Wednesday right before Thanksgiving, right? It all gets going. So we're uh, we're getting there, Jeff. Uh, good luck with your peace treaty you have going on, and uh, we'll talk to you again soon, man. Yeah, Clip, uh, I got to tell you, I'm not too confident in it, but, <laughs> hey, uh, I'm looking to turn a new leaf. We'll see how it goes. The big man on campus, Jeff Nadeau, joining us. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate it. And uh, we'll check in with him coming up Saturday on the Bud Light pregame tailgate. Get his thoughts on the night action going on Saturday night, including ECU and South Florida. We'll take a time out, come back, and uh, get ready for hour two of today's show. Morgan Aylers, the voice of Dowdy Ficklin Stadium, will join us. Next time he's in Dowdy Ficklin Stadium, there will be a few fans in attendance. Talk about that, and we'll hear what Jeff Scott, USF uh, head coach, had to say about this matchup with ECU. That and more on the way on Pirate Radio Live. We're back with you after this. It's a story that started in a community like ours. Cal Cunningham grew up in Lexington, where church youth groups working at the local brickyard in McDonald's shaped his life. And now Cal's running a different kind of campaign for the U.S. Senate. I'm Cal Cunningham. I want my service in the U.S. Senate to be about listening and going places where Democrats don't always go. That's what I learned growing up in Lexington, where we don't check voter registration before taking care of our neighbors. We believe in hard work and service, just like the soldiers I served with overseas. Cal Cunningham volunteered after 9-11, a lieutenant colonel in the Army Reserve who served three tours and took on corrupt government contractors. And Cal will take on the corruption in Washington that's been rigging the system for the drug and insurance companies. That's why Cal's not taking corporate PAC money, because he believes the top 1% don't need more favors. It's regular folks who need a voice. He'll be a senator on our side. I'm Cal Cunningham, and I approve this message. Paid for by Cal for NC. Here with Mike Mullis from Fixed NC. And Mike, you were telling me the other day, people ask you all the time, I didn't know you did that. What does that mean? You know, anything that involves property damage repair, call us first. If it's your crawl space, you've got interior humidity issues, a water loss, your ice maker line breaks, obviously fire and smoke, everybody knows we do those. But anything that involves interior or exterior property damage, we're your repair experts. Mike, how can everybody get in touch with you? 252-999-0001 or FixedNC.com. If you're like many, you may have put on the Corona 5, 10, or even 15 over the last two months. Well, the weather is warm and it's time to get that body back on track. At Clean Eats, we have you covered. Our weekly meal plan will quickly help you get back to where you want to be. Order online at cleaneats.com. Our cafe is back open, sanitized, and waiting to serve you healthy lunch and dinner options for dine-in, takeout, curbside, or even delivered through our delivery partners. Clean Eats, it's a lifestyle. 805 Red Banks Road, Arlington Village. You know texting while driving is dangerous. That's not new information. Yet most people admit to doing it anyway. Drivers are 23 times more likely to be involved in a car accident while texting. Know the facts and wait to text. The danger is real and it applies to you. Auto Owners Insurance. The no problem people. 
Information provided by Virginia Tech Transportation Institute. This is Jeff Gibson with Town Insurance in Greenville. Call me today at 756-8300. Go Pirates! Every team knows that the two-point play can be a winning move. That's why I'm here. State Farm agent Timothy Sawyer and my team are here to help you go for two by combining your home and auto insurance. It's a great call that saves you time and money. So go for the win and score some savings by combining your home and auto. It's just another way we're here to help life go right. Call me, Timothy Sawyer, at 493-0002 today. Looking for your next career opportunity? How about some extra cash to help pay for school? Your locally owned and operated Dixon Foods McDonald's is hiring, and they would love to have you as part of the McFamily. They offer flexible hours, competitive pay, and financial support to pursue your education through McDonald's Archways to Opportunity program. Come join the family at McDonald's. Don't let this financial opportunity pass you by. Please visit DixonFoods.com to apply. 2020 certainly hasn't been the year many of us were hoping for, but one thing has stayed the same. I'm Tim Sutton with Greenville Auto World, and our commitment to our customers has never wavered. Let Greenville Auto World show you how easy it is to buy a quality used car in Greenville. We believe in fair prices, superior service, and treating customers right leads to satisfied repeat buyers. Your vehicle is a big investment, and our customers trust us to keep them up and running with outstanding service and value. But Greenville Auto World, cross some parties at Bells Fork. This is Pirate Radio, WGHB Farmville, W224EI Greenville, WDLX Washington, and W281CH Washington. You're listening to Hour 2 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour is brought to you by University PC Care, your local tech support experts for all your business needs. Let University PC Care take care of it so you can take care of business. Visit universitypccare.com to learn more today. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. Town Insurance is your premier independent insurance agency. From maximizing opportunities to minimizing risk, Town Insurance Advisors uh, offer expert professional advice to clients of all sizes for personal or business insurance questions call 756-8300 today and clip as we head back into pirate radio live here's uh, another announcement for you you might want to write it down so you don't forget wow all right <laughs> congratulations to ecu alum and current orioles pitcher sean armstrong he and his wife just announced that they are expecting a little one in 2021. I told you about that a long time ago, Sherwin. No, you didn't. Okay, you're right. I did. <laughs> awesome. That's uh, congratulations to that. If you're just tuning in, that is a callback to when Brian North gave me the news that they had another youngin on the way, and Charlie said, "Yeah, Cliff, I told you about that months ago." So. We, we we talked about that like three weeks ago. No, we did not. Yes, we did. No, we didn't. We did because he had came out on Facebook saying he was having number two. Yeah, he was talking about going to the bathroom. No. <laughs> Why do you say things like that to make something you know, so, 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 so be- dirty? I don't know. That's just the way I am. Sounds like something I'd say. Morgan Aylers is here. How you doing, Morgan? I am fantastic. I got some good news, Shirley. I had the Clip Brock News Desk. Bryson. Oh, okay. Thank you. Bryson DeChambeau in the lead right now. The Shriners Hospital for Children open. That is not the good news. Good for him. But just one stroke back and tied for second, Harold Varner the third. HV3. ECU alum, all around great guy, and is just one shot back. And he just wrapped up his round one. So great day for HV3, one shot back of Bryson. He is Sambo. so due to win a Just to, to get, bust get, through. To, to break that glass. Yeah. yeah. And get a dub. And uh, it could be this weekend. Where is that? Oh, Vegas. Cool. Not a bad place to be. No. Nah, playing some cool. golf. That would be cool. All right. Morgan Aylers is here. Morgan. Clip. We thought. We thought. That the offense would have their breakthrough uh, against Georgia State. We just got to wait one more week, right? It's going to happen on Saturday. Uh, what's you know what, what's got to happen this Saturday that we haven't seen uh, the previous two weeks? Uh... Boy, the Braves are playing really well. Braves are up a touchdown, seven to nothing over the Marlins. <laughs> uh, no, uh, I think 
because it's there's a lot to answer there because there's, there's a there, lot there, of things there's happening. a whole lot to answer and yeah. I, I told holton i said well you have to play better I said the line has to play better. The receivers have to play better. The running backs have to play better. The coaches have to coach better. <laughs> it really is across the board. And, and I'm not saying that just you know because there's. I think Donnie Kirkpatrick said said it yesterday a little bit. There's maybe one thing on a particular play that goes wrong, and then it it busts something open. There's a uh, a good article on uh, Hoist the Colors that uh, Brett does where he breaks down some plays, and I had a chance to watch that and a couple of the offensive plays that he broke down. You could see exactly what he was talking about and. Uh, um, you know, football is a team game. It's not a it's not a one man guy like in baseball. Sometimes you can get out there and a pitcher can totally dominate a game. He can just totally dominate yeah. a game. Yes, he's got teammate eight teammates around him on the field, but a pitcher can go out there and totally dominate a game. Football, it's not like that. Even in basketball, you could have a guy take over, have forty yeah. points, and win you a game. But football, you need all eleven uh, doing their job. You really do, and and. Hopefully the Pirates will do that this weekend. They'll, they'll, you know, this is their third game. This offensive line. We don't know if uh, Dante's going to be back um, playing or not. Uh, I would imagine they're probably making preparations like he's not. If he does, you know, play great. If he doesn't, they've, they've now they're in their third week together, and hopefully the line will play a little bit better. Hopefully the receivers will play a little bit better. Hopefully the quarterback will play a little bit better, and the running backs will play a little bit better. All right. Well said. We can end it here. Thanks for coming on, Morgan. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> by the way, you can uh, find us on the internet or interweb or whatever. Yeah, great plug. Yeah. yeah. I don't know the website. I don't really have one. But you can find us. <laughs> PR927FM.com is where you can find us. Facebook Live. And we're on YouTube Facebook Live. Live and I found the YouTube thing the other day. Yeah. That's cool, right? That is pretty cool. Yeah. Hey, there I am. <laughs> there you are. Looking good. Yeah. Look. I mean, look at me. I'm right there. Yeah. Damn, I'm ugly. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. <laughs> okay, I just did. Uh, ECU's having their issues. South Florida is having their own issues offensively. In fact, they're trying to figure out what to do at the quarterback position. We'll hear Jeff Scott talk about that in a moment. But first, Shirley, let's hit Jeff Scott one. Uh, how big would this victory be for your team? Yeah, well, obviously they're they're all important. The big thing I told our players is, you know, East Carolina is a dangerous team. Uh, you, you turn on the tape. And, uh, you know, you see what they did uh, in their first game uh, against Central Florida. I mean, really, for, for two quarters, the first two quarters, and then the fourth quarter, uh, they, they had a lot of success. And, uh, you know, they've uh, lost their last two games, just like we've lost our last two games. Uh, I know uh, Coach Houston and his staff are uh, great coaches. They're going to have their guys ready. And, and any time that you have your back against the wall, uh, you know, you they're going to respond. And so, you know, I told our guys uh, we need to to uh, be ready to play our best game because I feel uh, very confident that East Carolina is uh, going to play their best game Saturday night. And uh, I think it's a, for where we both are right now. I know they're uh, still a year ahead of us as far as the new coaching change and all that. But for where we are this year, uh, you know, this, this uh, game is very important uh, early in the year to both teams and really the momentum uh, that a win could bring. Uh, Saturday night uh, could really uh, have a positive impact uh, on the remaining uh, season that's left in front of us. Morgan, I say it's likely that if ECU had played Norfolk State like it was scheduled, these teams would have identical one and two records. And I, they really are mirror images of each other. Jeff Scott in year one, Mike Houston in year two. But they, you know, they beat the Citadel. So they do have that winning feeling that they've, they've had a win in 2020. But then. They go to Notre Dame, lose fifty-two to nothing. Last week, you know, they kind of hung around with Cincinnati, but twenty-eight to seven, only able to put up seven points. So they're kind of reeling right now, too, uh, going into this game. They are, and this is one of those games that it is the first time that the the fans in South Florida will get a chance to watch them play. They they didn't get to go the first game when they played the Citadel. They play at Raymond James Stadium. I think it holds 80,000. I think they're going to be able to put 12 or 13,000 uh, tickets in there and people in the in the stadium. I'm uh, looking forward to going down there. We're heading down there tomorrow for that game. I can give you a report on that Saturday. All right. But it'll be um, an interesting matchup when you when you're looking at these teams because South Florida's had our number for for a few years now and even last year when they were down and Charlie Strong got let go they they came here and uh, took it to the Pirates but hopefully uh, East Carolina can get things going and they need to sustain some momentum offensively we talked about that that uh, it seems to me that this team is a tempo team it's a uh, you want to you, you 
I'm one of these guys, and this is just my personal opinion about things. I think if you've got momentum, and this is what makes Central Florida so so dynamic, is the fact they don't give the defense a chance to rest. When they're out there on offense, they're going to the line. They're snapping the ball. It's a, I think a, what is it a 35 second clock. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're snapping it with. 18 to 20 seconds to go on the clock and not substituting a lot of players in because when the offense substitute players the defense the officials then have to give the defense yep. Yep. a chance to substitute players and that gets the defense tired i think we're better offensively whether it's running whether it's passing we get to the line of scrimmage call the play go and uh, we did that last year we coming from behind at smu we did it against cincinnati and we had to lead in that game and I, I think the Pirates personnel is better suited for that, but they they don't pay me to coach the game. Yeah, and we're, I feel like we're kind of in where we were last year where the offense was sputtering, and then they did open it up a little bit, spread it out, go a little faster, and th- that's when we had the most success off, uh, offensively in 2019. And we're kind of in that cycle again, and maybe we break out coming up Saturday uh, against South Florida. So South Florida... The McLeod kid that started last year at quarterback, he'll start again, I believe, on Saturday. But they've been going three QBs. They, I think they have four that they want to get snapped. So Jeff Scott trying to figure out what he's got, and he was asked about the plans for QBs this week. Cut two, Shirley. I'm obviously not going to talk about names and orders and all that as we go here. Um, hopefully – Everybody in the future, uh, one of these weeks, hopefully everybody knows who our starting quarterback is going to be and even who the second quarterback is going to be. That that would actually be a good scenario. But right now we'll uh, continue to keep that close to our vest until we get out there. But uh, the, the young man that started fourth uh, in the week is now second uh, going into the game because he's uh, earned that opportunity by how he's practiced uh, all week long. There has been a little bit of, of shuffling uh, with those guys. And um, – you know, whoever we send out there first, we're going to give them an opportunity to go out and, and play well. And if they do, uh, then they may uh, continue to play the whole game. Uh, if we're not uh, satisfied with, with how they play early on, then, then we'll, uh, we won't be scared to go to the, the next guy and, until we can uh, find the rhythm that we need to uh, move the ball and have the success uh, that I feel like uh, we're capable of having on offense. All right. Uh, sounds a little bit disjointed, but they're going like full hockey lines at quarterback down at South Florida, Morgan, trying to find the uh, the guy that can get him in the end zone, I guess. Find the guy with the hot hand. It's like a running back by a committee. Find the guy with the hot hand running the football, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, again, I think it's a tempo issue. I think it's the guy that gets out there and starts getting into a rhythm, and once you do that, you can sort of narrow things down pretty quickly. And ECU, we, we've kind of talked about this. People have asked us, you know, is this just more of a development year than it is a, hey, we need to win in 2020? I think if they're keeping score, you're playing to win the game and you want to win. But there is something to the development thing. We talked to Colin Sherwin, who's a USF grad with DraftKings. He was on the show yesterday. And uh, he, he tends to think that Jeff Scott is treating this as like a a progression year, a get better. And that's why he's playing three or four quarterbacks every week, Morgan, kind of like a a scheduled scrimmage against an opponent. See what he's got. I, I I know why people say that and say it's a developmental year, but you know these guys wanted to play a full schedule. You know every every team in America they wanted to get up here and, and in the last week in August or first week in September, you know get after it and play a full a full schedule. The way it's happening, some teams won't. Uh, East Carolina doesn't obviously won't be playing their full twelve game schedule. Still a chance they could add a game they, later. They, they could add yeah. a game. Uh, with that being said, those guys are out there doing the same thing they do each and every day during a regular normal season. They're they're lifting, they're watching film, they're doing it. They're not just going, hey, this is spring football. We're going to show up a couple hours a day and go home and do whatever. Uh, I, I know, believe me, I know that personally. Uh, watching these guys and uh, they want to win, and nobody wants to win any worse than those players do out there. Nobody wants to execute any worse than those players do out there for East Carolina, and uh, it's going to happen. It's going to happen this year, and it's hopefully going to happen this weekend. One big bright spot for the Pirates last week, special teams. Jake Verity was good, as always, but you had the Tyler Snead touchdown. You had the Blake Pro uh, scoop and score on a block punt for a touchdown. Also, Snead is a weapon in the kick return game. Well, USF gave up a kick return for a touchdown against Cincinnati. Jeff Scott was asked how much he has emphasized special teams this week. Special teams has, has been a huge focus. Um, you know, like I said, I, I felt like our defense really took a step forward last week. 
and uh, feel like our offense and special teams are, are behind where we need to be to be playing winning football right now. And uh, there's several areas, obviously, in special teams that we must improve, and we've worked hard this week. And, and uh, kickoff coverage is, is one of those groups. Uh, you know, I think it's the uh, consistency of uh, getting guys, and, and thank goodness so far through, uh, through today, uh, we've been able to have the same group out there on kickoff coverage all week long working on that and uh, improving. But uh, there's no doubt uh, he's a dangerous player on offense. I think he's uh, their best playmaker on the offensive side of the ball. So I know our, our defensive guys have, have seen plenty of tape on him. And then uh, he's a weapon, like you said, at, at kickoff return. I mean, they're, they're going to obviously watch the tape. And uh, the very first return, they're going to challenge uh, back to the field. Uh, that's, that's a guarantee. They're going to make sure that uh, we've gotten it fixed. And so that's our job to – to do that, and um, you know, I, I feel uh, that our guys have improved this week in what we're asking them to do, and uh, you know, I expect to to see that improve Saturday night. Speaking on Tyler Sneed there, and I harped on Sneed, Prol, and, and CJ having two catches apiece in the UCF game. It was good to see Sneed get involved once again in the passing attack, Morgan, and uh, he's, a, he's a major weapon for this team. He's a major weapon. Blake's a major weapon. Uh, CJ Johnson is. Uh, the breakout guy this week, I think he's going to be that and then hopefully get everything rolling offensively from a passing situation. But I tell you what, Snead's just so fun to watch. When you when he's out there, he's not the biggest guy in the world, but he, I think pound for pound he'll take on anybody out there, including a lineman if he had to, and, and throw a block if if necessary against a big old lineman uh, because uh, he just – he just loves the game of football, and you can see it when he bounces around out there running the running the punts back. He likes the back. contact, too, don't he? He does. He's, yeah. not, he's not afraid to run somebody over. No. I think uh, the UCF game, he did that. That's so, right. A lot of fun to watch. We'll get uh, more on CJ in just a moment. Donnie Kirkpatrick talked about him yesterday. We'll get to that. But finally, uh, one more Jeff Scott cut. Uh, he was asked the positives and negatives for his football team right now. Positive and negative, those are tough words to use right now in 2020. Uh <laughs> Yeah, I, I think uh, I would say the biggest positive is how our players have bought in to the new culture and to the new expectations and what we've asked them to do uh, off off the field and even on the practice field. I think that really is a positive. If coming in, I probably thought that there would be uh, a lot more uh, – challenges uh, to our culture and what we're asking them to do accountability wise than where we've been. So, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm really, uh, the arrows pointing up as far as uh, the guys doing what we're asking them to do off the field and just the little things in meetings and expectations. And then, you know, the biggest negative would be self-inflicted wounds. Uh, you know, I, I think that, you know, any time that, that we're playing, uh, we want to make sure that we don't beat ourselves. That's something that I want our program to be uh, known for is that, hey, we're going to be we're, – we're not going to beat ourselves. We're not going to snap the ball over the punter's head. We're not going to throw five interceptions. You know, we're not going to, you know, allow a, a kickoff return for a touchdown. You know, things that we can control uh, based off of being disciplined and, and doing what we're asked to do. Uh, that's probably the biggest negative right now. And, and obviously, I don't want to take anything away from uh, the, the other teams and what they did. Obviously, they had to make the play, and, and uh, we played some good teams. Uh, but, you know, I think there's still a lot of things that we can control, and uh, we haven't done a great job of that yet. And uh, that'll be a big part of, you know, turning the tide a little bit and, and getting us in that win column is to uh, take advantage of, of uh, not doing that uh, Saturday night. Jeff Scott there kind of going over what went wrong in that game against Cincinnati, a very good team. I I will say that I was uh, pretty impressed. They only gave up three offensive touchdowns. The other score was that kickoff return. So South Florida right now, Morgan, struggling on offense, defense coming around. Uh, So, you know, I think it'll be a pretty good matchup coming up on Saturday. I think it is, and uh, I think it's a a game the Pirates can win, but they've got to get that – we we talked about – getting that positive mentality and, and getting over the hump with, with Harold Varner the third when you gave the scoring update. The Pirates have to do that this weekend as well. 
We want a live report from DJ Captain Morgan on the pirate ship at Raymond James Stadium on Saturday. If they let me up there, I'm going to be there. <laughs> I mean, it'd be a great camera. It would op, be a great photo shot. Op. Yeah, look at me, new pirate ship. <laughs> get it, get her done there, uh, Morgan. All right, let's say uh, take a time out. We'll come back. We'll hear a little bit from Donnie Kirkpatrick. Talk about some other action going on this weekend in football. And also, Morgan was telling me off the air how all his kids, all his boys, got their names. We should turn it into a quiz. Uh, you say the name, and then uh, Chandler and Shirley have to guess the athletes they were named after. Something okay, like that. We can do that. This is pretty cool. As a sports nerd like me, I was fascinated to hear those names. So we'll uh, we'll talk about that, too. When we return on Pirate Radio Live, back with you after this. Your CBD store in Greenville has the highest quality CBD products in the country. Your CBD store is the first and only brand that carries USDA certified organic products such as gummies, honey sticks, and high absorption water soluble liquids which are all made in the United States. They even offer products for your pet. The educated staff will help you answer any questions and you can stop in anytime to get a free sample. Your CBD store, locally owned and operated, open Monday through Saturday 10 to 6 right beside Duck Donuts in Greenville. Hey guys, listen up. The next 30 seconds is very important because we have an announcement. Shimmer Boutique is your one-stop shop to make you look good and thoughtful. This is Ashley at Shimmer Boutique. We specialize in men's and women's apparel and also carry the biggest selection of local hats and jewelry. From Yetis to Hey Dudes, this is the place for you. Did I mention we also have free gift wrapping? Come check us out at our new location on Greenville Boulevard behind Starbucks. Shimmer is your one-stop shop for the whole family and we will always make your shopping experience easy and fun. Hey Pirate fans, this is head coach Mike Houston. The physicians at Orthopedics East and Sports Medicine Center have been taking care of our athletes here at East Carolina for more than 35 years. Whether it's treatment for your sports injury or if it's time for that joint replacement, Orthopedics East provides the latest in operative and non-operative orthopedic care, physical therapy, and diagnostic testing. For experienced and professional services, call the folks who have been taking care of me and many of our fans in Pirate Nation or visit them online at orthopedicseast.com. Go Pirates! Humana is proud to serve veterans. If you've recently turned 65 or become Medicare eligible, Humana would be proud to help you with your Medicare decisions or any questions that may arise. Let an agent assist you now to determine which Humana Medicare plan may best serve you. Humana can teach you about health plans, which will provide you with the access to products and programs to help support a healthy life. Humana is proud to be the National Medicare Advantage Plan provider to the veterans of foreign wars. This is Denise Walker. Call me today at 434-531-5674 to get a no-cost, no-obligation Medicare benefits review. Do you think you or your employees might have been exposed to COVID-19? Arc Point Labs of Greenville offers same-day COVID-19 results. No referral needed. Same-day results available. Arc Point Labs of Greenville offers easy employer solutions to COVID-19 testing. Arc Point Labs of Greenville is located across from Vited Hospital on Executive Circle behind Southern Bank. Call for an appointment or walk in. Arc Point Labs of Greenville, 215-5688 or arcpointlabs.com. Hey, this is Jay from Villa Verde. Did you know the Villa Verde opened up its second location? Yes, it's Villa Verde Dos on Arlington Boulevard across the hospital. This new location is a fast, casual environment where you can make your own bowls for only $9.95. Choose from our fresh ingredients, from our toppings bars, or enjoy an amazing rotisserie chicken. We promise you can be in and out in less than 15 minutes. For a quick, healthy meal at an affordable price, visit us at Villa Verde Dos on Arlington Boulevard. Villa Verde, a platform for good. Register for Army ROTC to be a leader and an officer in the U.S. Army, Army Reserve, or Army National Guard. You could also be eligible for a full tuition scholarship. Lead the team that makes a difference. To learn more, contact Dale Anderson at 252-622-5346 or andersondal at ecu.edu. Paid for by the United States Army. Chico! <laughs> Chico's Mexican Restaurant is the home of the best margaritas. Grab your amigos and head to Chico's every Tuesday for the Gulp of Mexico, a huge 46-ounce lime margarita for only $6.99. On Thursdays, relax and enjoy half-price pitchers of Chico's house margaritas. Choose from lime, strawberry, blood orange, raspberry, or peach. For Mexican food and fun, it's got to be Chico's Mexican Restaurant in downtown Greenville and online at chicosrestaurant.com. Chico's, where the fiesta never ends. Hi, this is Brian Meador from East Carolina Athletics. You're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation.
You're listening to Hour 2 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour is brought to you by University PC Care, your local tech support experts for all your business needs. Let University PC Care take care of it so you can take care of business. Visit universitypccare.com to learn more today. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. With approximately 100 locations throughout the Carolinas, First National Bank is helping both individuals and businesses redefine convenience in banking. Visit us today at fnb-online.com. First National Bank member FDIC. And Clip, uh, we just had some breaking news here just moments ago. Uh, Justin Williams of the Carolina Hurricane, the three-time Stanley Cup champion, has announced his retirement. He spent the last 19 years in the National Hockey League. Yeah, I saw that, and I think he had a statement with it and said he be. I guess he came into the NHL as a 19-year-old in 2000. I mean, it just tells you how long that guy has been in the NHL. That's crazy to think about. And uh, a Hurricanes legend, for sure, Justin Williams. Remember the Chuck Caton call? Justin Williams has won the Stanley Cup! Yep. When he had the uh, the MD netter there. I was there. And uh, that was you know, good stuff. So, uh, Justin Williams hanging it up. Uh, the Braves up 7 nothing. Just got a text from Igo, who will join us coming up on Friday. He said, Braves Rays World Series is happening. That was his prediction before the season. And uh, it's looking pretty prophetic at the moment. Although, let's be honest, the Braves aren't beating the Dodgers. Uh, the A's up on the Astros right now. 3 to nothing in the third inning. Got Rays Yankees tonight. Got Dodgers Padres coming up tonight as well. Uh, nice college NFL doubleheader tonight with Tulane and Houston in the college ranks. And then tonight on Pirate Radio, it'll be Brady and the Bucks versus Nick Foles and the Bears. We've seen that matchup before with those quarterbacks. Brady and the Bucks. And the Bobcocks. Surely giving us a, a, a smile but a head shake. Kind of a good and bad. I'm going to tell you, Elton John, great show. Oh, man. And a Braves saw, fan. Saw him last last year in Raleigh. I love Mr. Karaoke. I love Rocket Man karaoke. You, I, I feel like I've done that you did. with your karaoke before. You, you did. You and, don't remember, but you did. And I cursed and you were <laughs> upset with me. I'm sorry. We, it's okay. <laughs> I do oh, like Elton John. By the way, Mr. Uh, Steve Perry and Journey. No show. Oh. Where are you at? Where are you at? What happened? Mr. Oh, no. I'm going to put my own clip on my own Facebook page and tag everybody because I can sing, you know, Don't Stop Believing on and maybe get famous on YouTube. Didn't show. <laughs> well, guess what? You were over <laughs> next Wednesday. <laughs> you will see me there. Uh, and I'm going to put it on Facebook, uh-huh. and I'm going to have you video me, and I'm going to put it on Facebook and tag you in it. You go, I'm going to have you video me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have it. I'm going to have Golly, Andy Shazam. <laughs> I'm going to have you in my Facebook live things. We're going to show the world. <laughs> Chandler was a show last night at uh, Sports Trivia. Yeah, things did got win? interesting. Did they win? Chandler's team came in third, we, but a very we, solid third. You know what that is? Second loser. <laughs> well, we 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 lived up to our team name. Our team third name place. is actually third place. Yeah, and they came Second in third. Loser. <laughs> Morgan, why is there beef between us? Because you were a no show. <laughs> ah. He takes that personal. Takes I had personal. A, I had a one of those the fire pit you know tables up at the loft reserved right. for you. Okay. Okay. That's, let's that's, not. You want to see the picture? That's not true. I'm going to show you the picture clip. Hold on. If it says for Chandler Honeycutt, <laughs> I'll believe you. But right, hold on. People don't believe me. And in a moment, we're going to play a game uh, where Morgan's going to say the name of his boys, and you're going to have to say who they're named after. In fact, let's do it right now. Where's your picture? I'm not going to look Okay. All right. So, Morgan, this how... Way, you'd, have been, you'd have had much more fun last night at the loft than you did finishing second loser it's well, all right, now there's a shot at Cliff no, Rock. No, 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 no. Trust so, me, I'm going to show you some pictures. No, okay, trust me, you're right. going to go. You could be right. I should have been singing. Okay, you could be right. All right, um, Morg, how many giant human sons do you have? I have four boys. Yes, you literally have put together a wrestling stable of children. 
Yeah, yeah, I mean, you guys look like a like NWO or something uh, bigger than that. Um, all right, so give us the name of the oldest one. Jordan Nicholas. Jordan Nicholas. What two athletes are Jordan Nicholas named after Chandler or Shirley? Jordan Nicholas. Uh, two separate two athletes. Well, Jordan, obviously, I think of Michael Jordan. Okay. I, I feel like that's not correct. That is correct. That is correct. All right. Nichols. Nicholas. Nicholas? Yeah. Shirley, you want to take a shot at this? I'm going to go with Jack Nicholas. Ding, 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 ding. That is correct. All right. Next uh, boy. Oh. Griffin Palmer. Griffin Palmer. Oh. Uh, Arnold Palmer. Correct. All right. Shirley, you can go for the other one. <sighs> Griffin Wait, I already forgot Griffin. Oh, oh, it's kind of a... Uh, okay. Yeah, I remember now. Um, It's not exactly Griffin, Shirley, but thank Braves. Thank... Fred McGriff. The crime dog, Fred McGriff. That's the one I thought was really cool. Because I was we were talking about the crime dog a moment ago. Braves up 7 nothing right now. All right, uh, next one, Morgan. Peyton Ryan. Uh, Peyton Manning? Yes. Matt Ryan. <laughs> Not Matty Ice. No. <laughs> uh, Ryan. Ryan. I'm going to go with Ryan Sandberg because that's the Ooh. only one I could think of. Good guess. That's that good is guess. Bailey's. That's uh, Bailey. Brian. <laughs> yeah, I know. Rhino. I, Rhino's I, Rhino's but name that's the him. only one I could think of right off the top of my head. All right. How about if I say the word express? Fastball. No hitters. Nolan, Nolan Ryan. Ryan. Nolan Ryan. Nolan Ryan is correct. And uh, last one is Holton Maddox. <laughs> well, Holton Maddox. Yeah, I'm going to go with Greg Maddox. Greg Maddox is and correct. Holton, you can take this one, Charlie. <laughs> this oh, one's yeah. a little tough. Give uh, me the hard one. Thanks. And this one kind of surprised me. Morgan said he liked the name. This guy was a very good player. Went to a school that we don't necessarily like. The answer. Troy, uh, uh, um, uh, Chandler has his hand raised. Nope, no, nope, Shirley's nope. got it. it looks like, it's the Kata. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, God. Uh, Tory Holt. Tory Holt is correct. Yeah. Da, 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 da. It was going to be Colton or Holton, and we went with Holton. I like that, Morgan. Again, as a sports nerd, I think that stuff's cool. Yeah. Good names. I like them a lot. Well, my my, my siblings are named after athletes. Okay. Well, let's hear what them. What the hell happened to you? <laughs> she was named after Shirley. I was actually, I was actually and named. <laughs> I have a half sister, and she is also named Shirley. So, I, it, yeah, I can't wait to hear what Morgan two, has to say. Two about Shirleys it. in my I'm, family. Hi, my name's Daryl. This is my brother Daryl. My other brother Daryl. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. Her, uh, my middle name is D. Her middle name is Lee. So, Shirley D. and Shirley Lee. Lee. I like. That. I was named after my half sister. It's a long story, but let's move on to my my sister. Is oh, I know this one. Her well, she's uh, uh, my sister's full name is Jeanette Dale Murphy. So you can take a wild guess as to who he's she's named after. Dale Murphy. Yep. And my brother's name is Dempsey Murphy, and he was named after a kicker. No, <laughs> I, I was thinking Jack Dempsey, right? Jack that Dempsey, the, the guy with the half a foot. Yeah. yeah, but no, there was also a, oh, Jack a Dempsey, boxer. The boxer, the boxer oh. Jack Dempsey. That's he oh. was he was named after Jack Dempsey. See, I got that. Well, they're yeah. both not named Jack Dempsey, are they? What was the kicker's name? I was told the boxer's name was Jack Dempsey. Yeah, That's yeah, what my yeah. mother told me. Uh, half foot. Tom. Tom Dempsey. Yeah. Tom Dempsey. Okay. So, my brother's... <laughs> what did you Google in? Half foot kicker? I, I, Dempsey... <laughs> no. Dempsey kicker. I left the foot part out. But you said half foot. <laughs> because that came up on the search. <laughs> That's how you search things. You you're, put in the clues. You're exactly right. Half foot kicker. All right, Tom Dempsey. All right, that was fun. Who are else? you who? named after an athlete, folks? Chime in on Facebook Live. Who am I named after? Chandler from Friends. Yeah, I think you've told me that's yeah. I've told Chris you Chandler, former Falcons there quarterback. You go, Chandler. Bing. Oh, Titans fan on um on Twitter. Uh, Titans fan Chad Moore, I should say, put on Twitter. He said he was hoping Peyton Manning and Ryan Leaf. <laughs> oh, Morgan was a huge fan of that draft and said, I'm taking the first two names, <laughs> Ryan Leaf and Peyton Manning. Well done, Chad. But you no. can tell my my golfing years versus my baseball years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So there you go. 
I like it. Good stuff. Thank you. All right. Um, we just killed 15 minutes. We're good. That's how you. That's how you run a show. That's folks. how you do it, folks. <laughs> that ain't working. That's the way you do it. That's a good uh, karaoke that song too. That ain't working. That's the way you do it. We mentioned C.J. Johnson a moment ago. Got Money to get enough. him going, Mister Dire Straits. Uh, is CJ frustrated with how much contact he's getting on the route? He uh, had pass interference called against him three times, or called on the opponent three times on Saturday. Could have been more. Donnie Kirkpatrick talked about that. Cut three, Shirley. Yeah, there, there's no doubt that's their strategy. Um, I, we know a lot of guys on their staff, you know, very well. A lot of us have coached at the same place, and basically they told us that was their strategy: hold him. And they'll only call so many interferences in a game, probably. And you know, if if, if, it, if it does turn out to be a problem, then then maybe they'll, they'll adjust and quit holding. And uh, he had three pass interferences. A lot of people are like, "Well, CJ didn't do anything." I was like, "Well, you know, he didn't have a lot of catches, but he did have 45 yards." Now, you know, that don't go in your stats, so it doesn't make it look like that, and you don't get that that momentum from that sometimes as a player. But he did he did draw three pass interferences. Two others should have been called. That, that they didn't call. So what we're going to have to do without giving it away, because I'm sure they, they listen to, you know, the, the level of this media here, I'm sure, is national, so that I'm sure they're all looking at this tonight, too. Uh, we're going to have to move him around a little bit. We're going to have to be creative. And, uh, and like I say, I kind of had a game plan to get Snead going last week, and, and for the most part, that worked. You know, Snead got a lot of touches, and he was productive uh, with 100 and some yards. We got to make sure we've got some things like that in there that specifically go to CJ that uh, they can't hold him. So you know, there's motions moving him around. There, there's some picks, there's some rubs, there's some different things that we've worked on this week. He's had a good week of practice, and um, hopefully we'll get him started because that that is now that's a big part of what we got to get going. All right, is that you always hear Morgan? Hey, they're not going to call holding on every play. And it might happen on every play. Now we're hearing, hey, they're not going to call pass interference every play. Let's just go out there and mug C.J. Johnson. Well, they didn't. They called it last year, if you remember, in the Cincinnati game. Uh, they called it early on. And then uh, the last drive that we had, if you watch the video of that, we get down to like the 20-yard line, end up kicking uh, the field goal to tie it back up. And C.J. literally is held every play. And there was a play going in the end zone. He gets mugged and there's no flag. Yeah. And those flat, those, I think they were told afterwards, well, they should have been called, and we don't know why they weren't. But, you know, that's part of football. And, and yeah. until, um, you know, CJ gets to that point where he, he breaks through that, that, that wall again and, you know, starts being productive and starts, and hopefully this week, if they're using the rubs or the picks or whatever they in motion, whatever they start to do, um, you know, get CJ out there and still, but, but at the same time, still keeping the productivity from Sneed and Blake right. Prohl. Um, you know, then you've got coverage all over the field, not just to one side, and I think that's very important. And you've said it before, Morgan. I mean, uh, CJ's a, a good kid, and him and Holden have a good relationship. Mm-hmm. But he's 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 an emotional kid. He's very emotional, uh, and teams know that. Yeah. Right now, that's the UCF the was really on him. Right. They were on him right from the right from yeah. the beginning of the first play. I tried saw to it. took his head out of it. And yeah, you know, we're saying we're going to get you, and they did, and it, it it's frustrating. But you can't let the guy know that he's getting the best of you. Yeah, right. yeah. You got to sort of just smile, laugh it off, and keep going. Donnie Kirkpatrick was asked about that, Shirley. Cut five, how he's doing mentally uh, right now. Oh, he's he's really emotional. And that, in the first game, he got too emotional because the guys went after him a little bit, and they turned into a one-on-one. And so we had to settle him down a little bit from that. And this week, he really controlled his emotions. Uh, he just uh, couldn't get involved in the game. He, he really uh, – had a couple of fundamental things that we've really tried to work on. And, and and you just try to go back and just tell everybody, you know, really how well you play is not determined by necessarily how many catches you make. You know, that that's just, that's just part of it. When, when you're not thinking about it, it it'll come his way. We, we, he'll get the ball. He'll start making those plays. It, it's early in the year. It, nobody wanted to have played poorly. Nobody wanted to have lost already. But uh, I think he's, he's in a pretty good place this week. He, he acts like he's ready to go, and, and, and he's okay. All right, so looking forward. Uh, you said a bounce back coming this week for, yeah, I think, for CJ. I, I really do. I think so. I think uh, hopefully it's going to be a bounce back as well for the offensive line. Yeah, and, uh, I think those guys will maybe get again start to gel a little bit. And- They're just undermanned. I mean, without what if you had Deontay Thompson and or Deontay and also uh, yeah, Deontay Smith or Deontay you know, or Thompson. Deontay Johnson. 
or Deontay Dempsey. <laughs> what if you had a half-footed Deontay Dempsey out there? <laughs> no, what if you had Deontay Smith and Noah Henderson? Uh, Mike Houston, Donnie Kirkpatrick would feel a lot better. But well, you, you got what you got. You've right got now. five offensive linemen, and if you've got if you had a, a business or a, a sales force and just say that has five sales reps, and all of a sudden your two highest, you know, going in your highest producing sales reps aren't on the field, you've lost forty percent of your productivity. Yes, you're putting other people in, but they still don't have that experience that those seasoned veterans have. And those guys also can help. If I'm experienced and you're not, you know, as experienced, the experienced guy is helping you on the line saying, okay, you know, move over just a step. You know, little things during the game, and that that's the thing that the Pirates are missing right now a little bit. And maybe, uh, again, it'll, it'll all start to gel. Mike Houston's had great things to say about Nashad Strother, who right now has started in two games uh, this year at two different spots. And that's just... It, it it's not ideal, uh, and he is going to be a good football player on the line at ECU. But uh, that growing pains, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, they're going to have to go through. Them. That's what they're doing right now. All right, uh, Charlotte, let's take another time out. We'll come back more with Morgan Aylers, more with Chandler, Steve Perry, Honeycutt. Don't and- stop believing. That started kind of southern I'm a, and then went British. I'm going I'm to get you to film me on Facebook. I'm going to get you to video me, boy. Hey, man, we're going to put it live and in color. <laughs> I'll take a time out. Come back more after this. Hello, Pirate Nation. This is Representative John Bell, the Majority Leader of the North Carolina House, and it has been an honor serving the people of Eastern North Carolina the last eight years. I've had the privilege of working with your local representatives, Dr. Perrin Jones and Chris Humphrey, as they delivered hundreds of millions of dollars in COVID relief funding to our small businesses, health care providers, and families right here in Pitt County. Unfortunately, their opponents are funded by radical, liberal, out-of-state donors that want to destroy our agriculture heritage, defund the police, and silence your voice by buying this election. This is not North Carolina. We cannot and will not let this happen. Dr. Perrin Jones and Chris Humphrey are focused on solutions, not revolutions. They will make sure your voice is heard and represent our Eastern North Carolina values. So Pirate Nation, the choice is clear. On November 3rd, please support and vote for Dr. Perrin Jones and Chris Humphrey for the North Carolina House. Strong voices for Eastern North Carolina. Paid for by the John Bell Committee. Get your ice cold Bud Light, Bud Light Seltzer hip. Even though you can't go to the game, doesn't mean the game can't be brought to you now hip. Just go to BudLight.com slash delivery. That's BudLight.com slash delivery. Give me two bagels. Coming at you. It's a little short. Ow. Sorry. You know what? I'm just going to walk them over to you. Whenever there's a game to watch, there's a Bud Light there. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser Bush, Bud Light Beer, and Bud Light Seltzer, IRC Beer, Beer in Texas, St. Louis, Missouri. North Carolina State Parks are now open for visitors. Parks should be used for exercise, fresh air, getting out in nature, or a day trip as the state safely reopens. Visitors should enjoy themselves, but please remember the three W's. Wear face coverings, wait six feet apart, and wash your hands often. Focus on moving through the park, keep social distancing in mind, and avoid large groups. While most facilities and activities will be open, please contact any state park before your visit with questions or visit ncparks.gov for Forward slash open. Ahoy, mateys! To keep those cars clean, you need the Pirates Cove Fast Pass. The new Pirates Cove Car Wash and Haviland Express Lube on Glen Burnie Road in New Bern is now open. Pirates Cove is now offering Fast Passes for $9.99 for new Fast Pass customers. These Fast Passes are good in New Bern and at all three Greenville locations. Visit us in Greenville on Fire Tower Road, Memorial Drive, and on East 10th Street. And now in New Bern on Glen Burnie Road. So we have you surrounded. Pirates Cove, the official car wash partner of ECU Athletics. Warren's Hot Dog Pizza, homemade lemonade. Hey, Pirate Nation, Warren's Hot Dogs, two locations are open for business in Greenville and Chocowinity. Both locations have drive through windows, so stop by today for hot dogs, pizzas, subs, apple and peach turnovers, homemade lemonade, and breakfast in Chocowinity, featuring homemade cheese, ham, and chicken biscuits, plus sausage dogs and more. Warren's in Greenville, across from Ron Ayers Motorsports, and in Chocowinity, next to the fire department. Warren's Hot Dogs, one some get some 
Hidden phone trade-ins, hidden plan requirements, hidden catches. You won't find them at U.S. Cellular because we speak FAIR. Plus, when you switch right now, you can get $500 off the latest phones. Upgrade to FAIR. Upgrade to U.S. Cellular. Requires new postpaid service plan, new line port, and credit approval. Qualified smartphone purchase and comes via monthly bill credit on a 30-month RIC. Taxes, fees, and additional terms apply. Does the idea of going to your local U.S. Cellular store make you feel a bit uncomfortable? Tired of the hassle of waiting and wearing a mask? Let Toby Williams and its outside sales team take away that worry. They will come right to your home or office and drop your phone off on the porch or at the front desk for you. Saving you time and worry is what the team at Cellular Warehouse is all about. Call Toby today at 252-799-7051 and let them help you with all of your wireless needs. Cellular Warehouse, your local U.S. Cellular authorized agent. Hi, this is Phil Steele of Phil Steele's College Football Preview Magazine, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of Pirate Nation. You're listening to Hour 2 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour is brought to you by University PC Care, your local tech support experts for all your business needs. Let University PC Care take care of it so you can take care of business. Visit universitypccare.com to learn more today. Now, back to the show. Well, welcome back. Hey, Domino's of Greenville has three locations to take care of you. Take advantage of the week-long carry-out deal of all three topping pizzas for only $7.99. Order online today at dominoes.com. Now let's head back in to Pirate Radio Live. Here's your host, Clint Brock. Thank you, Shirley. Chandler Honeycutt producing today's program. And Morgan Aylers is here in hour number two. Hour three on the way. Troy D. will be hanging out. A lot more Donnie Kirkpatrick and Blake Harrell on the way. And we'll open up the booty bag. Booty, 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 rocket everywhere. What are we giving away today, Shirley? I can't uh, get we excited are gonna... if I don't hear the music. Well, well we can't. it's not time We yet. can't hear the music well, you because... don't say it. We gotta promote excited. it. We gotta preview it. So you gotta give it during the five o'clock hour when Troy's here. Oh yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Is that enough for you? Yeah, <laughs> boy. <laughs> we will do it in the five o'clock hour. I don't know, Morgan. Should we do it? No. Okay. No, right. Troy whine and complain because. Nah. <laughs> All right, so either you're going to whine you'd and complain, to, or he is. So. You'd have to listen to him for an hour. you only got to listen to me for about another 10 minutes. Yeah, we got you for another 10. Uh, Be- we're going to give away, by the way, uh, lunch at Tiebreakers. All right, lunch for two to uh, to Tiebreakers. That'll be good. And, by the way, I do, I do trivia out there on Tuesday nights. You do trivia on Wednesday nights at AJ's. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If somebody calls in right now and pays me $20, I'll give them all the answers for next week. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Interesting. There's another giveaway. Wait. Well, you're giving him That's right. money. I take all the money. And then he's giving you a I'm victory. Giving, I'm giving you all the answers. All right. That's a fair trade-off. Morgan, we're letting you go, and you're not here on Friday because you are headed to Tampa, We're right? heading down, uh, driving down tomorrow. Going to stop tomorrow night in Savannah. Looking forward to uh, going to Paula Dean's restaurant. If you, Paula Dean's. If you've never eaten there. It's just butter. Oh, my God. Yeah, you were telling me about it, and it made me really gooey, hungry. Gooey, gooey butter cake for dessert. And what would you say? Like, you, it's usually buffet, but now no, it's not. It's, it's uh, Sandra was telling me, it's basically uh, uh, family style. You yeah. order, like, the two meats and the veggies and oh, stuff man. like that. They got the macaroni and cheese. It's like, you get a bowl of it, and it's like 11,612 calories. Oh, it's, yeah. Yeah, Maybe some people I, like looking at pictures of certain things. Uh, send me some pictures of that food. I will. Morgan. I will. I'll, I want to see I'll, the I'm food. Gonna text you. But you know, the, <laughs> the bad part. The only time I've been there, we came back last year from Orlando. We went down for the week, but prior to the Central Florida game, and we're driving back. And Sandra says, "We got a surprise. We're going to stop in Savannah and eat at Paula Deen's." Okay, and you still got five hours to drive. You mean oh, after uh, the after you eat lunch, after the amazing after, after meal? The, I said, you know what's going to happen. I said, in about an hour, I'm going to have to pull over, and you're going to have to drive. I'm going to take a nap. Somebody's conking out. Somebody had a food coma for about an hour. Yeah. She, she drove about an hour. So you need a DD after you go to Paula Deen's. You really do, or you need to go across the street to the hotel like we're doing. <laughs> All right. We'll good drive plan. up uh, Saturday morning, finish the drive down to Tampa. So are you going? You got the uh, the family tickets? Is that how yeah. you're going yeah. to the game? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and we saw, uh, and you weren't there last week in Atlanta. No. You had a prior engagement. Uh, but, uh, you know, Kenny and people chiming in. Mm-hmm. And we had a ton of callers on the fifth quarter. So there was more purple there than there was blue. Yeah, that's that sounds about right for Pirate fans, right? Yeah, I mean, Pirate fans always have traveled good. And hopefully, I know there's going to be a couple tailgates down there. Ricky from uh, uh, Tampa Bay. Um, 
it, it just sent me a message earlier, gave me a cell phone number, said, we're having a tailgate, we want you to come by. Okay. <laughs> You don't hey, have to tell you twice. We're in. Yeah, so exactly. I'm going to do that. Yeah, sounds fun. Uh, Raymond James will have some fans in the stands as ECU takes on South Florida coming up Saturday night, seven o'clock. Morgan will have to worry about ESPN Plus, like we will, and you will out there watching because he'll be at the game. Did you uh, last week the ESPN Plus? Where did you watch the game here? Uh, most of it, yeah. We went with Bailey. We went to a restaurant, and ESPN. You, I think it was you last week. Was that or yeah? Was ESPN you? Last week was you, correct? <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, we went there and it froze. Like three minutes to kick off on DirecTV. It froze. So we left Melissa, Melissa and, and Bella there to pay that part of the bill. And we went over to another restaurant. We get in there and it's just about to kick off. I'm walking in. I see a text message. Woohoo, we just scored. So we missed the... We missed the oh, the pick six, right? We, the get back, we, go, we go to this other restaurant and uh, it's still frozen. So then I run down to the truck, get my tablet, and we watch the first half in the restaurant on my tablet. Was it, I guess, like a satellite issue or a pair of direct TV issue? I think. Yeah, interesting. Well, they scored so dang quick, uh, you, you yeah. missed it there. Uh, Pirates have gotten off to a seven nothing lead in both games, Morgan. Well, I think we need to get off to a seven nothing lead. Mm-hmm. Except go for two, make it eight. Just Ooh, to get off the seven that's point. the secret. That's the secret. The secret sauce. Go for two. You're up eight. So the seven point Schneid is over with. Then you onside kick it, get the ball. Now you're up 16. Why are we not doing this? I don't know. I just thought of it and it's freaking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Have you coached football in a uh, another life? No, but I did stay in a holiday. I'm staying at the Holiday Inn Express tomorrow. <laughs> okay, there you go. Uh, Morgan Ehlers is here. Morgan, uh, looking forward to some other action this weekend. It's uh, I bet you are, Cliff. And a boy, high five. And a boy. <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, no, um, you're talking sports action. Yes, I am. Hey, you got a lot oh. of action going. I knew what you were talking about. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Texas, Oklahoma has really taken a, uh, a back seat with the way they've been losing this year. The old Oklahoma rivalry. Win, Oklahoma wins that game. You think so? Yes. They bounce back. Yes. Tennessee, Georgia, three thirty on Saturday. Where Georgia. Are they, where are they playing? In Athens. In Athens, so yeah. it's not going to be wet from the hurricane. Hurricane. Uh, I'm thinking Georgia. Tar Heels, Hokies. Hokies. Really on the road. On the road. On the road. Clemson, Miami. Is Miami Clemson. good enough to hang with Clemson? Clemson. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. And uh, yeah, no reason to Breaking pick. Breaking news: The Astros sitting behind the plate just stole some more signs. <laughs> Morgan was saying, "Why do they have all this Astros stuff for the Braves Marlins game?" It's a great question, but the answer is because they're exactly. playing in Houston. And even better, I was going like, "Man, they got more people there than they do normally." The Marlins have more people there than they do normally during a regular season. That game. is a very good point. Uh, they are allowing fans. I can't remember if it's the Championship Series or the World Series, but they'll finally be some fans at a baseball game later this year and did i see yesterday that the miami dolphins said that they were going to allow full capacity uh starting in the well no it, it was the governor of florida who decided that they would allow full capacity but the dolphins say they're going to still stick to that uh, i think it's like to thir- a limit 20 or 30 percent something yeah like something that. like that they uh, he at least through october i saw that yeah gonna re-evaluate. yeah but the governor is the one that has basically thrown the doors open and said you can go full capacity but it's up to the individual i guess sporting arenas to decide how many fans they'll allow in redbeard says morgan is right i went to paula dean's in myrtle beach it's amazing it's well this is the original uh bag lady and sons this is the restaurant that sort of started it all for her her first restaurant Hmm. and uh yeah all right so Morgan's going to be enjoying highly that. Highly, highly recommended. And if you don't eat the macaroni and cheese and then the ooey-gooey butter cake, I'm sorry you wasted a trip. You're going to be on the way there or on the way back you're going? No, we're going tomorrow night. Oh, nice. Um, okay. We're, we're going to check into the hotel. Time we get there, hang out, and then we're going to go eat. And then I'm going to stagger back to the hotel and go to sleep. Morgan, what is your prediction? Prediction. I'm going to tell you my prediction. Fool. I'm getting better at it. You are getting it. One on day it. you'll have a good Mr. T impression. Uh... I think the Pirates win this one. And I'm not saying it confidently, uh, but I'm just saying that we're, we're due to play a good football game. We're, we're due to get the things, the breaks to go our way. Um, I like the Pirates in this one. I'm going to say 35-28. All right. 
3528. You heard it from the voice of Dowdy Ficklin Stadium, who will be back in the stadium coming up next Saturday yeah. with a few smattering of fans. 3,500, 3, 3,300, yeah. something like that. And hopefully we can see that number go up as the season rolls along. We'll keep Science an eye. And data. We'll keep an eye on Temple this weekend. Uh, Navy. Are they finally playing? Temple's finally playing. Uh, they played Navy. So we'll be watching that one to see what the midshipmen have because they have struggled this year. Came back to beat Tulane, but were blown out by Air Force. So if, uh, if Blake Harrell and his crew can stop the option, we got an opportunity to get past the midshipmen this year. So we shall see. Morgan, thanks for hanging out, man. Thanks. I appreciate it. And uh, hopefully next week we'll be back to my normal 5 o'clock hour where we can give away something from the booty bag. I'm looking forward to that next Friday. <laughs> There's a tease. Yeah. Another little tease by it's Shirley like, Rose. It's like a reflex. Yeah, boy. Boy. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. <laughs> we'll be back right after this. Hidden phone trade ins, hidden plan requirements, hidden catches. You won't find them at US Cellular because we speak fair. Plus, when you switch right now, you can get $500 off the latest phones. Upgrade to FAIR. Upgrade to U.S. Cellular. Requires new postpaid service plan, new line port, and credit approval. Qualified smartphone purchase and comes via monthly bill credit on a 30-month RIC. Taxes, fees, and additional terms apply. This is Brandon Tate, owner and operator of Atlantic Wireless, an authorized agent for U.S. Cellular since 1997. Visit AtlanticWireless.com to find the store near you. We go beyond the call. Hey, Pirate Nation, this is former ECU tight end Bryce Williams for my friends at the Auto Store Group. If you're in the market for a quality used vehicle, then the Auto Store Group is for you. The Auto Store Group has three locations and over 150 quality used vehicles to choose from for all budgets. Shop their entire inventory today at theautostoregroup.com. The Auto Store Group, your hometown store and pirate owned and operated for over 38 years. Go Pirates! At Tiebreakers, we admit we have a bit of a problem. People love our wings so much that they're starting to sell their home TVs just so they can watch all the sporting events here at Tiebreakers. Seriously, we're glad you love our hand-breaded, hand-cut boneless wings that much, but we really need you to go home at the end of the night. It's okay. We'll be here tomorrow. And when you come back, bring a friend with you. For great food, great friends, and cold beer, we'll see you at Tiebreakers. Tiebreakers, break the chain, eat local. Summertime is here with hot temperatures, thunderstorms, and hurricanes. It's easy to recognize pests invading your home, but a lot of people forget about moisture destroying your home's crawl space. Pest Tech is celebrating its 20th year protecting your homes using dehumidifiers, professional grade liners, and most importantly, our licensed and highly trained technicians. Visit PestTechOfGreenville.com for a free estimate on moisture control and the other silent destroyer termites. Trust your home to the best. Pest Tech of Greenville, your East Coast exterminating professionals. Did you know the Red Cross provides about 40% of our nation's blood and blood components, all from generous volunteer donors? But supply can't always meet demand because only about 3% of age-eligible people donate blood yearly. This is Paul Russell from F3 inviting you to join us for our Free to Bleed Blood Drive on Friday, October 23rd from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Drew Steele Center on Elm Street. Help save a life by scheduling an appointment at redcrossblood.org or stop by the Drew Steele Center Friday, October 23rd from 11 to 4. Let us help you get back to business. This is Donald Stocks and Justin Judge of PIP of Eastern North Carolina. We're ready to assist your business with branded PPE. Would you like face masks with your logo? We can do that. Plus custom social distancing signage. Now is the time to ramp up your marketing efforts. Whether it's cutting edge, contactless, touchless marketing, or traditional direct mail, we can do it all. We are PIP of Eastern North Carolina. This is John Gavigan with the Gavigan Agency. Our top priority is doing what is best for our members. Whether you are buying a new vehicle, a new home, protecting your family with life insurance, or filing a claim, our agency will be there every step of the way. Our goal is to become a trusted advisor for you and your family for all of your personal and commercial insurance needs. Give us a call in Greenville at 756-1400 for a car, home, business, or life insurance quote today. And give us the opportunity to show you the benefits of doing business with someone who cares. 
Great food, great atmosphere, and great service is Atavola Market Cafe. Atavola is simply a restaurant that focuses on that, being a great restaurant. There's something for everyone at Atavola. The menu offers a variety of great choices like pastas, pizzas, sandwiches, soups, salads, and seasonal rotating selections. Lunch or dinner, Atavola is always the right call. Call ahead and get Atavola to go. Or stop by the bar for a drink with friends. It's simple. Come and eat at Atavola Market Cafe, Red Banks Road next to Food Lion, and AtavolaMarket.com. Atavola, pirates supporting pirates. This is Pirate Radio, WGHB Farmville, 1250 at 92.7 FM Greenville, WDLX Washington, 930 at 104.1 FM Washington. You're listening to Hour 3 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour of PRL is brought to you by Bud Light. Reminding pirate fans to stay in the game and drink responsibly. Bud Light, the official beer of the ECU Pirates and proudly distributed by Carolina Eagle Distributing since 1989. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. UBE has been an ECU tradition for over 50 years. You can shop online anytime at piratewear.com. UBE has the biggest and best selection of ECU sportswear and accessories for pirates of all ages. Every day is game day at UBE. Now let's head back in to Pirate Radio Live. Here's your host, Clip Rock. All righty, hour three of Pirate Radio Live here with you on Pirate Radio 92.7 FM in Greenville, 104.1 in Washington, also online, PR927FM.com. And you can watch us on Facebook Live and YouTube Live, Troy D. Hanging out for hour number three. What's up, Troy? Good to see you guys. Glad to be back. Who was sitting here earlier? Was this Captain Morgan just here? Uh, a gentleman with a very big brain. I was going to say, Captain Big Head is what it is. I mean, the headphones were like, I had to like tighten them all the way down. How big is Morgan's head, by the way? I have not measured it, but it's large. I was, I was at a local establishment eating lunch one day. Well, I'll just say, CD's Grill earlier this week. Great and I had spot. A friend that was with us, and they were like, have you ever noticed how big Morgan's head is? Like, physical size. Not, well, probably the other way too but you know what i'm saying like he just has a big some guys just have a big melon yeah yeah you can have a bigger head you know not in a bad way fits your body thank you yeah sorry i didn't mean to tie you into morgan's big head but you know what i'm saying maybe you have a small head i think i do actually and uh <laughs> well <laughs> well i i don't want to say i have a maybe i just have a normal head no nah, there's nothing normal <laughs> in that head that's for sure. <laughs> I'd like to thank my friends. I feel like, you know how like uh, game shows, they have uh, promotional consideration provided by. Yes. I feel like, you know, today, Troy D's appearance today provided by Parker's Barbecue. So I was out, par- I ate, ate lunch at Parker's today. Still got my tea. I was a little chilly at Parker. The air condition works good at Parker's. So I got a Parker's pullover. You complained. You, you uh, Karen it's, talked to the manager and said that she was cold. I did. Luckily, I complained to the right person. And Billy Parker, he, yes, brought me a Parker's barbecue wow. pullover, which is, by the way, sweet. That is good. It looking. actually looks very nice and I like fits. It. So uh, I am wearing that on the program today for those of you listening online or on radio. But uh, thanks to our friends at Parker's, who will be here delivering. For the Bud Light pregame tailgates. And Billy came by here earlier today. I heard he let the cat out of the bag. And uh, we're going ribs. Oh, I figured that'd be a big hit for you Mass. I am looking forward to Saturday. Yeah, a little pep in your step for that. That is faux that show. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, we will talk about ECU South Florida. Got a lot of Blake Harrell cuts to run. Donnie Kirkpatrick will hear what they had to say at their Zoom on Wednesday. Got and that coming your way. Big night tonight with the NFL clip, at least for me. The Chicago Bears will be playing. And Tom Brady, this is an interesting marquee game. I have the Crazy! I know you like to follow point spreads. You talk about point spreads. You talk about gambling mm-hmm, a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the other side of the timeout, I have what I think I found the craziest point spread maybe you've ever seen in your life okay. on this game tonight. Okay. I have located it. I will explain. And I bet you when I tell you about it, you will say you've never seen anything like this before. Okay. And you're someone that I trust who's seen a lot of lines. Yeah. All right. Point spreads. We shall see. You yeah. have me intrigued. Yeah. We also... I have, I have not told you about it yet. I'm going to share it with you live on the air. Sounds good. All right. We have a giveaway inside the booty bag for you as well as we will make you a winner. Lunch for two to tiebreakers on the line today. We'll do that later on in this hour three of Pirate Radio Live. We'll be back with you after this. You don't need a big meeting. You don't need a birthday. You don't need any excuse at all. You just need to love subs. 
times 12. Order the Jersey Mike's Catering Box today. Jersey Mike's. Be a sub above. It's Jersey Mike's time. One Club Supreme? Check. What's Aaron's way? Only $2.99 for Pepsi and Lay's? I'm in. Order your sub Aaron's way on the Jersey Mike's app or visit a Jersey Mike's store. Let's turn a trip to the branch into a tap on your phone. Let's hit pause on a lost debit card without hitting pause on life. That's how First National Bank is redefining convenience with a top-rated mobile app that puts more security and control at your fingertips and friendly people to help you succeed right by your side. Let's get started at fnb-online.com or your local First National Bank. FNB member FDIC. Hi, this is Billy Parker, and football is here. Tailgate at home with family and friends this season and let Parker's Barbecue do all the cooking. While tailgating at your house, let us provide all the food with our delicious chicken, barbecue, seafood, and sides. We can customize packages for any size group, big or small. Give us a call today and place your order. Parker's and football, a winning combination. Also, shipping nationwide at parkersbbq.com. Parker's Barbecue is how friends and family come together. Hey, welcome to Jack Brown's. Hey, can I get a cheeseburger and add lettuce and tomato? No, we don't have it. You can get some macaroni and barbecue chips on it, though. Greg Brady style. Or cream cheese and jalapeno jelly. Cobra Kai. Or bacon, a fried egg, and some cheese. Chiplet. <laughs> or just cheese, you know, like a cheeseburger. Cool. I'll take a Greg Brady with those new cheese fries you guys got. Sounds good. Oh, I forgot. Can I get us at a ranch? No! Jack Brown's, 805 Dickinson Avenue, Greenville. Can't make it to the game? Relax. Postic Sug Furniture can provide you with the best seats in the house. We have the area's largest selection of Lazy Boy motion furniture in stock and ready to go. Lazy Boy recliners, reclining sofas, love seats, and reclining sectionals in hundreds of colors, styles, fabrics, and leather. All at a very comfortable price. Remember, when it comes to Lazy Boy motion furniture, we're your ticket to the best seats in the house. Postic Sug Furniture in Greenville. CD's Grill in Winterville wants to thank you for all of your support during these crazy times. CD's Grill has the area's best country cooking, and you can come and enjoy a down-home breakfast or one of our daily country lunch specials at CD's Grill. CD's now has an incredible lunch special from 11 till 2 every Saturday. Choose from two hot dogs, cheeseburger, or chicken sandwich with fries and a drink for only $4.99 at CD's Grill every Saturday. CD's Grill, 111 West Spire Tower Road in Winterville. This is ECU Head Baseball Coach Cliff Godwin, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to Hour 3 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour of PRL is brought to you by Bud Light. Reminding Pirate fans to stay in the game and drink responsibly. Bud Light, the official beer of the ECU Pirates and proudly distributed by Carolina Eagle Distributing since 1989. Now, back to the show. Take a look at your stock market report for today. The Dow was up 122 points and closed out at 28,425. The NASDAQ was up 56 at 11,420. And the S&P was also up 27 points at 3446 That's your Wells Fargo Advisors Financial Report. For a personal look into investing, call Wells Fargo Advisors today at 756-6900 in Greenville. Wells Fargo Advisors, LLC, member SIPC. Now let's head back in to Pirate Radio Live. Here's your host, Clip Brock. All right, thank you, Shirley Rhodes, Chandler Honeycutt. 
both producing today's program, the big dog, Glenn Griffin, getting ready for another Zoom. Also, speaking of Zooms, I'm about Zoomed out for the week again as uh talked to Kevin Gidry earlier this week, former Pirate, part of those championship teams with Skip Holtz. He uh, joined me on a Zoom. That'll be up shortly. We had our press box Zoom earlier today, Troy D., which is live now. You can yeah. check it out on our social media sites. Myself, you, uh, Midor, and Bailey. No Weaver today. Yeah. He did give his score, but uh, got that Zoom done. Got the coordinator Zooms yesterday. Mike Houston Zoom today. A lot of Zooming. Going we did. We've been Zooming all over the place. Zoom, Zoom, Zoom all over your room, room, room. There you go. Um, I will give you the average of the press box guys, which you mentioned me, you, Bailey, Weaver, Midor, of what the score will be. Okay. So we've been pretty much on point with this. For the season. This has been pretty close. Again, yeah. This is I was the, the aggr- only one that got it right last week. You are. You are. Yes. But this is the, the... So I'll take all the scores that we have and then average them, get the aggregate number and put it out there, and that's probably what's going to happen. And again, you're welcome for me helping out the average for the group. You absolutely I'm a team player. Us. There's no question. I'm helping the team. You're on fire this year. <laughs> hey, you got to say it while you can until you're wrong. Hopefully I'm wrong this week uh, because I did have South Florida winning the game. Troy... Yeah. You're going to ride with the Pirates one more time. I'm taking the Pirates one more time. I got burned. I feel like I got burned last week. I felt really good about the Pirates last week. I don't feel as good. I don't feel good about them this week, but I'm going to take them. Uh, it's not a confident pick, but I am going to take the Pirates to win. But if they burn me this weekend, Clip. Whew. Will you be back to pick them again against Navy next week? I'm going to have to probably say no. Yeah. We shall see. This, this, this is a must win for me to continue to pick them for next week. All right. You heard it, Pirates. Yeah. Win, win Maybe it that's for, the uh, motivation they yeah. need. We had win one for the Clipper earlier yeah. this week. Now it's win one for Troy D <laughs> as we head in late. In, we need a win. Week. No, I, th- I, feel, I, I feel that this is their best opportunity right now. And they're taking on a struggling offense, and hopefully that means a good defensive performance by Blake Harrell's guys. And uh, let's hear from some of the defensive coordinator. He spoke uh, yesterday with the media via Zoom and surely cut one from Blake Harrell. He was asked uh, how tough it is to prepare for multiple quarterbacks. He'll have to do that because USF is playing at least three quarterbacks a game. Here's what he had to say about that. Yeah, they, they rolled, uh, rolled a lot of guys in there, quarterback, all very talented, all very good players, um, you know, which certainly is what it is. You, you got to kind of – each one has something he does really well, and you got to kind of alert your kids to that and maybe you make a different call for one as you post to the other. Um, and they got a lot of skilled kids that can really run and they're really good up front. So they, they uh, like you said, proposed some challenges, and we got to be ready to meet those and step up to the plate and, and see what we can get done. Troy, the old cliche, if you have two quarterbacks, you don't have any quarterbacks. What if you have four? <laughs> that's, a, that's a mess. Uh, Jeff Scott's trying to figure out right now who his guy is at QB. I agree. And uh, they've got a bigger problem. Yeah, that's a real issue, and uh, I like them having that issue, and hopefully not us. Absolutely. Uh, Blake Harrell was asked about, uh, so first quarter against UCF, defense did all they could to keep the Pirates in the game. Second half against Georgia State, ECU only gives up one offensive touchdown. Now, every other part of the season has not gone well for the defense, but Blake Harrell was asked how he builds off those times that ECU's defense has looked good this season. You know, I, I think we talked about it a little bit last week. We have played well at times, and at times it's like we can't get over the last play and we can't handle adversity. And that's something we we continue to talk about and keep working on. And, hey, don't don't worry about what happened in the last play. Move on to the next play. Don't point fingers about the last play. Pull the thumb and let's get on to the next play and keep moving. And and you just got to take it one, one play at a time. It's like eat an elephant. You eat an elephant one bite at a time. You win a ball game one play at a time. Don't worry about – uh, you know, the third quarter, fourth quarter, last play, whatever it may be, uh, take care of that play. Take care of what's important now. And uh, we're talking about right now just at practice, hey, win this rep. And then after you win that rep, win the next rep. And stack rep after rep after rep. rep. And next thing you know, you've won the day of practice. And, and that's how we kind of faced it. Troy, as the king of analogy, how did you feel about the elephant analogy? There? I like it. I, you know, immediately got my attention. And uh, I'm a big analogy guy, as you know. And it, look, they got a lot of eat, eating to do. <laughs> so that's a good analogy. <laughs> they got a whole and it made me crew think, of elephants. You know, uh, Blake Harrell, the defensive coordinator, he's looking for his first victory as a Pirate. Yeah. Too. So, you know, the, these guys, you know, he's never had a win as an ECU coach yet. 
And so as Rick it's Smith, just, it's not just the players. As Rick uh, Smith says too, that, that there's a lot of new guys on the defensive staff. You know, it's yep. not just Blake Harrell. So yeah, that they're trying to get continuity there. Uh, you want your players to buy into what you're doing, and a good way to to help that process is to win a game and yeah. get a little confidence going there. Well, and I just think it could be the spark of energy that this team needs. And sometimes you just need something good to happen. We've had a lot of things go against us. Uh, it'd just be nice to be able to have something positive and, and something good to happen. Yeah, and, and I'm hoping that that could be the case this Saturday. It's been a, an aggressive defense at times and Blake Harrell was asked, how much blitzing does he plan on doing this weekend? Cut three. <laughs> well, um, you know, I think I think you just kind of get, get in the game and see how it goes. It's just just like any other time. Um, if, can you get there with three guys? Can you get there with four guys? Can you get there with five? Do you need six? Do you need seven? Whatever it may be. And, and you've got different plans throughout the game to, to how you're going to get that done. And who and which exactly guys it'll be? Is it going to be your D line? Is it going to be your linebackers? Is it going to be your inverts or overhangs? Um, but you just got to come up with creative ways and find guys that that's what they do best and get to the best of the best and find guys that cover the best and put those in, guys in coverage. All right, Blake Harrell there, and uh, we've seen him mix up things on the defensive side. And if you're taking on quarterbacks that are inexperienced, uh, blitzing one way to, to really change a game. We'll see how aggressive they are this Saturday. Yeah. I mean, I, the defense, we talked about it going into the season. You would have figured, I don't know, like I just didn't think they'd be struggling this bad. You know? Uh, yeah. But, I, <laughs> again, you don't have a lot of guys that have yeah. had success on that side of the ball. I yeah. mean, outside of McMillan, really, it's a new defensive line. I mean, there were signs yeah. that – they were going to struggle, but you you would. And again, how much how much did we talk about the lack of time Blake Harrell actually had with his guys this offseason? It's a big factor. I so, mean, yeah, and, and it, it's just. And, and I heard you talk about it with Morgan earlier. None of these guys are looking at. You know, we talked Monday about is this really, uh, you know, practice for next a year, developmental a, year. A, and in some ways, it. I, you could look at it that way, but as he said, the players and coaches aren't looking at it. That they're way. keeping score. They, they, they want to win. They want to win right now. But you know you are planting seeds for next year, and you are getting guys experience that will have that have no experience right now. But uh, it's just a it's a tough deal. How do you get experience when you don't have experience? You got you know you got to throw them out a, there, yeah, throw them into the it's fire, a chicken and egg thing. So it's we're gonna take some bumps along the way, and it's just problem is there's been a lot more speed bumps than we ever anticipated. I think yeah. not just this year. I'm talking about you know really going back the past six years. Well, I'll tell you when the defense was awesome, and that was the first play of the game last week, Troy. Yeah. Did you even see it? A lot of people missed it you know because what? it was the first play of the game. <laughs> I, got, I was with you guys here doing the pregame. I did the last yeah. hour. You and Corey. Oh, Moore that's right. We're yeah. here. I went back right as the, right before kickoff. I went back to make a play to Parker's Barbecue, and I was coming, and Glenn's like, holy mackerel. And I came <laughs> back, and I saw I had just caught the replay. Yeah. It just happened because it was so fast. I, I didn't even have time to make a plate before the Pirates had scored. Well, you were making a pretty big plate. It was a commitment that I had <laughs> to Parker's. I meant to ask you, too. Did you mean to leave the grilled chicken here? Yeah. Oh, okay. That was, for you that guys. was community plate? Yeah. I know you're a big fan of that. I am. I, I had a piece, and then oh, the rest man. was for y'all. That grilled chicken at Parker's. Grilled, is grilled amazing. chicken is the uh, probably the under, the most. The under, hidden gym? Yeah. Undervalued play. I agree. Uh, on the Parker's menu. A lot of people don't know about it, they don't think about it, they just think of fried chicken. When you go to Parker's, but the uh, the grilled chicken is the play, and they don't. It's not unlimited. They only make a certain amount. When they run out, they run out when too. It's gone. It's gone. So That's I've been there. To be- I've been there before where I've wanted a grilled chicken breast. See, and it's not available. You so hit I- up lunch there, and you talk about how good it is, and then I would leave work in the evening, yeah. and go get some. Too and late. Sorry, we're out. Oh yeah, Troy, no, have, Troy no, took it out. <laughs> the fried chicken, <laughs> yeah, but, but right. the grilled chicken's gone. Right. Yeah, you kind of got to get that early. That was uh, that was a an MVP yeah. for yeah. Saturday. So, yeah, I, that was intentional left. Appreciate that for you guys. Yeah, good looking out. All right, uh, the pick six, great start to the game. How did it get away from you after that? Uh, Blake Carroll discussed. You know, when you when you start off uh, really fast, sometimes you're like, oh man, this could, this could be a great day. And then sometimes over the years, it's been all our experiences. Like you kind of want to, hey. Get a three, three, you know, three and out stop right away. Maybe that turnover pick six coming on the second series, uh, just to get your kids, hey, consistency, playing the next play, and, and things like that. But we still, it's, it's still the same thing I mentioned earlier. Next play, something good happens. Next play, something bad happens. Next play, 
and, and move on and keep playing. And, and like we've all kind of mentioned and talked about consistency uh, throughout the uh, throughout the ball game. Because you guys have rotated a lot through the first two games, obviously your first year as coordinator. Do you feel like you're starting to get a better feel for the personnel, you know, what, what guys do certain stuff well, that sort of stuff? There's no question. It, it's, you know, it, it's probably about – being married your first year, I guess, you know, you kind of, you find out exactly what your wife likes. You find, you find out what exactly she don't like and yada, yada. It's kind of like that with your football team. Uh, every game you play, you find out what you're more comfortable with and putting those guys in certain situations or what guys can do what, what guys, you know, really rush the pass or well or what guys can drop into coverage and, and you put them in better situations each and every ball game and each and every practice. And, um, you know, you, you try to get them there for Saturday for South Florida. All right, Stephen, I go interrupting my yeah. Zoom. Uh, how about I was like, how did he get on the show? <laughs> it was kind of strange, right? Like, we looked at each other. Day. Like, yeah. why is he talking right now? Uh, another analogy, though, by Blake. He's Harrell. coming I, for your crown. Son, this guy, I'm liking this guy more and more. The more I listen to him, <laughs> the you know, king of analogies. But uh, the t- you know, offense, defense. It's like peanut butter and jelly clip. You got, but oh, you got to put them together at the right time. If you just have a peanut butter sandwich or just have a jelly sandwich, not as good. You got to get both of them going right time, right place in the sandwich, and that makes for a solid football game. Thank you for breaking that down for us. Well, very well said. Yeah. All right, let's hear what Blake Carroll has to say about South Florida's offense. Cut five. You know, if you, if you look at the stat page, they, they I think they're about 165, 170 yards rushing a game, and they so they obviously have ran the football pretty well. Um, you know, they got like I said earlier, they got some speed. They're going to take their shots. They still show that in the Cincinnati game where they're going to try to stretch the field on you. Uh, they got some receivers that can really run. They got two backs that, uh, number one, number 10, they can then, you know, stretch the field vertical and, and lateral and horizontal. But um, that that's the best, the biggest challenge for us to just match in their speed. All right. There is Blake Harrell, defensive coordinator of the Pirates, hoping for a good performance kenny on facebook live says the offense is not helping them out that is true and uh, we'll talk about uh some of the offensive side of the ball with donnie kirkpatrick a little later on or as i would refer to it as the jelly of the peanut butter gotta have them both for a successful sandwich there you go and uh <laughs> if you just have one troy not the same that's I mean, exactly said it perfect yeah so it, he's right you, it, one side of the ball just can't get it done even two sides of the ball we had special teams going the right Wait, we're actually special teams was probably the, the one side that worked efficiently. Well, that would be your bread. I mean, yeah. look, peanut butter and jelly together is good, right. but how do you how do you eat special it? teams? You got to have the bread. the bread. Yeah. So really, what we had was a bread sandwich last week with no peanut butter or jelly in it. <laughs> yeah, so, that was not great. And that's not a great sandwich. It was something. You're eating bread, yeah, but you're missing out on the, what it could be. Bread's an important part of a sandwich, wouldn't you say, Troy? Absolutely. And if you had but, bread, like say in the kitchen, and somebody threw it away. Yeah. That would suck. It would. <laughs> I like how you brought that full circle. <laughs> that was a legit uh, yeah. issue we had this week. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I got some. I, felt, I do feel bad about that. That was totally unintentional. So, we, you know, we're trying to keep the studio from looking like a frat house on Mondays after, you know, because there's a lot of people in and out on a weekend. The studio. The yeah. studio. We're just trying to keep it clean. It's new. We're trying okay. to. There's a lot of food being delivered. Not sure what that has to do with this issue. Well, so I. I was trying to clean up Monday after Ellerby said, hey, see all this stuff laying around? We need to do a better job. Mm-hmm. You know, there was some stuff in the, in the, ki- in in the, the back. kitchen. Yeah. 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 So anyway, it was it was towards the end of the day. And I was like, you know what? I'll take these boxes out. They got I don't think anybody left them intentionally. But mm-hmm. I guess there was a few pieces of, of a loaf of bread. No, you, you make it sound like there's that, just bread like out strewn about. <laughs> so, it's in a sunbeam bag yeah. as bread is with a tie on it yeah. as bread sits in a kitchen. But it was, for some reason it didn't register to me. It was just like it looked like the end of the loaf or something like oh this is somebody's. I thought maybe Parker's had brought it. was left over. Nobody needed it. Yeah. So I just tossed it out with the boxes and then he came and was like hey did you happen to see a and he left over bread. Funny t- I'm like, yeah, that was yours. Yeah, like, bread in a bag for a sandwich. Yeah, my my fault. That's okay. What if, what if I buy you a bring you a new loaf of bread to, as a make good? Then I would never bring Please. up this topic again. I would and get you. Uh, what do you do? You prefer white bread or whole wheat? We'll go wheat. All right. You know what I did though. I'll bring, Troy? You, I'll bring you a loaf of bread as a make. Good. I went carb free that day. Did and you? Just uh, yeah, I had a ham and cheese sandwich with with no bread. <laughs> <See>? <laughs> I made do. You got to make do. You just gotta, you got you did like a roll up. 
and i was so pumped too because i got the you know the deli cut sliced ham like yeah. it's honey ham it's really good uh-huh and uh deli sliced uh, american cheese white yeah. american cheese and when looking for the bread it was nowhere to be found my, that is completely my fault yeah. and i will uh i will bring you a loaf to make it up to you and again folks this is all about football this is you got to have them all together it's just like you had a parcel sandwich yeah of the meat but man you really wanted that bread to put it all together there were some good things in the game last yeah. week but we need them all together yeah and that turnover was committed by me <laughs> yes it, yeah unforced errors control what you can control <laughs> this, all that stuff this is what happens all right let's uh you know, a ham and cheese sandwich is pretty good for lunch. You know what's better? Lunch at tiebreakers. Tiebreakers. Like how I did that. Good. Shirley, let's open up the booty bag. Booty, 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 booty everywhere. Booty, 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 booty everywhere. What if you went to tiebreakers and you're like, um, I'll take the cheese steak. And there was no bread. Like, it was just cheese and steak. You I, well, bread. you know what? I know some people that have actually done that. That were carb free. Yeah. yeah. They actually got the cheesesteak, hold the bread, and they had the cheesesteak, all the inside stuff, and they ate it with a knife and fork. Yeah. I mean, it's doable, but it's just it's not Here's the same. another insider's pick. Someone told me about it. They said, uh, hmm. get the, I think it's a special this week. I think it's still available. Um, if I go tomorrow, I'm thinking about getting it. The chicken seed, well, it's not chicken, it's the Caesar salad with grilled shrimp on it. Oh, is a special this week. So they've got grilled Ooh. shrimp instead of chicken on top, which you might do on a Caesar salad. It's mm. the grilled shrimp on it. I heard that is fabulous. I've seen pictures of it, it looks very good. I, like I had a that. friend that had it the other day and called me to recommend it to me. <clears throat> like, he was like, Hey, by the way, I know you go to tiebreakers next time you do, you ought to try this. Sounds okay. good. Yeah. I like that. Uh, All right, caller 12, 317 1250 is a winner lunch for two to tiebreak. And don't forget, I got the craziest point spread you've ever seen. All right. On the game tonight with the Chicago Bears. We'll talk more about that. We'll talk uh, here a little bit from Donnie Kirkpatrick and Troy D as we go to break. You have an announcement? Yeah, you know, I want to tell you about my friend Tony Corey. Uh, a lot of people, if you have a business and you want to buy or sell your business, a lot of people, you don't know where to turn. You know, if you want to buy or sell a house, there's a thousand real estate agents you can call. You know, everybody seems to know a real estate agent, I bet. Uh, but what about a business clip? Who would you call? There ain't many people, I'll tell you that. But there is Tony Corey. He is the guy to call in town. He's the only one I know and the only one I trust. Uh, he's with Trans World Business Advisors right here in Greenville. Uh, you can go on his website, transworldeast.com. The cool thing about Tony is uh, he's hooked up with hundreds of and thousands of folks in their network that are looking to buy businesses if you're trying to sell yours or if you're trying to get in a business and you want to be an owner are you a manager are you tired of uh working somewhere else and you want a, a franchise they have access to all the franchises that are available uh they have tons of folks that can help you get in business or sell your business they have plenty of uh pre-qualified buyers in their database uh, 150 thousand pre-qualified buyers in their database looking for opportunities and maybe one just like the one you have so contact tony Corey today 347-9606 is his direct sell number 252-347-9606 he'd be more than happy to help you if you're ready to be your own boss run your own company they can set you up if you're ready to sell yours they'll do the same too thanks to tony Corey for his support with trans world business advisors well, good stuff we will take a time out we'll have our winner we'll have troy's crazy line We'll have some Donnie Kirkpatrick. And as we go to break, Chad says he's all about the sub in a tub and does not miss the bread. So maybe, yeah. Troy, you indirectly changed my life. You know what? Don't give me that bread. Maybe I'll start going carb-free sandwiches. Wow. What if you, like, go carb-free and then all of a sudden, like, it cha- it does change? What if I'm in there next year just freaking ripped? <laughs> yeah. You're, like, all swole and, like, jacked in here and be like, what happened to Clip? Troy threw out his bread by accident a year ago. And it Chase's just, life. It was, and life is full of decisions. It's one decision after another. Yeah. I, you know, they always say, hey, make one good decision today. Mm-hmm. Because one good decision could lead to another good decision. Just like one bad decision leads to more bad decisions. So if, if you could only do one thing today, make one good decision, maybe that was an accident that became a decision for you not to eat the bread because it wasn't available that well, led to more good decisions, Clip. You made the decision for me in this case. You helped me along that yeah, decision. Yeah, but you didn't go get more bread. Like, you ate that the sandwich true. without it. Yeah. That was a decision you made. All right. Well, let's... Shirley, should we take a break? <laughs> well, I was waiting for you guys to take a break. Right, I've well, already got the winner and everything. Yeah, I've been right. waiting on you guys. Well, who was the winner, Andy? Why, why we got it? <laughs> uh, Ross Groom of Winterville. Congrats. Congrats. All right. All right, good deal. We're taking a break for real this time. <laughs> We're back after this.
It's a story that started in a community like ours. Cal Cunningham grew up in Lexington, where church youth groups working at the local brickyard in McDonald's shaped his life. And now Cal's running a different kind of campaign for the U.S. Senate. I'm Cal Cunningham. I want my service in the U.S. Senate to be about listening and going places where Democrats don't always go. That's what I learned growing up in Lexington, where we don't check voter registration before taking care of our neighbors. We believe in hard work and service, just like the soldiers I served with overseas. Cal Cunningham volunteered after 9-11, a lieutenant colonel in the Army Reserve who served three tours and took on corrupt government contractors. And Cal will take on the corruption in Washington that's been rigging the system for the drug and insurance companies. That's why Cal's not taking corporate PAC money, because he believes the top 1% don't need more favors. It's regular folks who need a voice. He'll be a senator on our side. I'm Cal Cunningham, and I approve this message. Paid for by Cal for NC. Your CBD store in Greenville has the highest quality CBD products in the country. Your CBD store is the first and only brand that carries USDA certified organic products such as gummies, honey sticks, and high absorption water soluble liquids which are all made in the United States. They even offer products for your pet. The educated staff will help you answer any questions and you can stop in anytime to get a free sample. Your CBD store locally owned and operated open Monday through Saturday 10 to 6 right beside Duck Donuts in Greenville. This is Martin Truex Jr., and as a NASCAR Cup Series champion, I love one-stop shopping. When I need fresh tires or fuel during a race, my pit crew takes care of everything. Off the track, I have an auto owner's independent agent. They handle all my insurance in one place. Car, home, life, and business. Get your own pit crew and find a local agency with auto owner's insurance. This is Brian Smith with Town Insurance in Greenville. Call me today at 756-8300. Go Pirates! There have been many changes in the automotive world. At Phelps Chevrolet, the Phelps boys are here to take care of you. Mike, Daryl, and four of Mr. Phelps' grandsons, Wade, Wes, Allen, and Clay. You see, things at Phelps remain the same. The Phelps team has served Eastern North Carolina for over 50 years. We make your visit easy and fun. We are your neighbors, and that's what neighbors do. Phelps Chevrolet in Greenville. Like Mr. Phelps' great-granddaughter says, come in and get you one. Hi, I'm Annalie Newhoff. And I'm Rob Campbell. And, and we, we are, are with, with Copy Pro. Pro. We have been locally owned and operated here in eastern North Carolina for almost 50 years. Copy Pro is the leader in office technology. Does your business struggle with keeping printing costs low or producing professional documents? Here at Copy Pro, total customer satisfaction is our number one priority. We have a variety of solutions to help reduce your printing expenses and make your business more productive. Call us today at 1-800-682-6558 or online at copypro.net. Copy Pro. We are the professional office systems people. University PC Care has been the Pirate Nation's go-to IT expert since 2006. Unfortunately, many organizations today simply react to IT issues after the damage is done. This is known as the break-fix cycle in the tech service industry. University PC Care's business services division has a better way, a proactive solution called BizCare. What's at your office? Call William at University PC Care today to schedule your free BizCare consultation or learn more at University PC Care. Care.com. White Claw Hard Seltzer. Discover a new wave of refreshment crafted using seltzer water, 5% alcohol, and a hint of fruit. Available in five fruit flavors, two grams of carbs, gluten free, and 100 calories. Find it at whiteclaw.com. White Claw Hard Seltzer. Nothing tastes quite like it. Please drink responsibly. Hard seltzer with natural flavors. White Claw Seltzer Works, 2019 Chicago. Visit whiteclaw.com for full nutritional information. Pirate Radio. We are not coming together to just be average. We want to build a program that will year in and year out compete for the American Athletic Conference Championship and compete nationally against any and everybody. The voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to Hour 3 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour of PRL is brought to you by Bud Light. Reminding Pirate fans to stay in the game and drink responsibly. Bud Light, the official beer of the ECU Pirates and proudly distributed by Carolina Eagle Distributing since 1989. Now, back to the show. Well, welcome back. University PC Care has been Pirate Nation's go-to IT expert since 2006. 
University PC Care, the local tech ex- uh, support experts for any business needs. Let University PC Care take care of it so you can take care of business. Visit universitypccare.com to learn more today. And once again, congratulations to Ross Groom of Winterville who picked up a lunch for two at Tiebreakers. Tiebreakers is open every day at 11 a.m. and is the best place to watch your favorite sports while enjoying the best wings in town, sandwiches, appetizers, cold beer, and more. Follow Tiebreakers on Facebook and Instagram for daily updates. And a quick uh, sports note, uh, Chandler just showed me a notification on Twitter that Baylor football has paused their activities due to positive COVID tests. But as of right now, their October 17th game with Oklahoma State is still on. Clip. All right. Thank you for the news update there, Shirley Rhodes. we got a great sports night tonight for the first time in a while. We've got the college NFL doubleheader. Seems like uh, we haven't had a Thursday night college game in a while, but tonight it'll be Tulane versus Houston. How about that, Troy? Is this D? Houston's we, first game. I was going to say. Yeah, just think if we were uh, on Cougar Radio and yeah. we finally get to the. Yeah, they hadn't played a game yet this year. Great, and it's not because of them. It's all their opponents have uh, had to take a pause when they were supposed to play them. Yeah, and I think Baylor might have been one of those, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, yeah, Houston. So into mid-October for their first game. <laughs> and we'll go. Uh, they'll go at it tonight with Tulane. And then it'll be the Bears and the Bucks. Troy D. right here on Pirate Radio. Bear down, Shirley Rhodes. Nah, bear up. Bird up. <laughs> Uh, and this is, you know, uh, unfortunately in this day, this is a game I probably would have gone to normally. Is Brady, it? see him live. A, see Brady live. It's a Thursday night game in Chicago. The weather's still, it's not cold, too cold yet. Uh, if it's like today in Greenville, it's beautiful. And you make a long weekend, I, I could go take one of the boys, go to Soldier Field, and then make a weekend out of it. Stay with some fam, my sister up there. It would have been a fun weekend. But thanks, COVID. You ruined it. Yeah, they screwed it up. So they'll have no fans in the stands, and uh, I won't be in Chicago. But I came across this today, Clip, and I really – I actually, you were the first person I thought of. Because right now the Bears are what, uh, underdog, six-point dog? Uh, four to I six. think it's down to three now oh, because okay. the Bucks have a lot of injuries. Okay. But it was, yeah, four and a half, I think down to three. This headline caught my attention. It said Tampa Bay Buccaneers are 86-point favorites against the Bears tonight. I was okay. like, what? And then I was like, all right, you got me. I'm going to look into this. I said, uh, Points Bet is a brand new sports book in Illinois that just opened, recently partnered with the Chicago Bears to offer a crazy, crazy betting promotion of fans. This week, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on Thursday Night Football, Bear fans can bet on an insane 86 point spread. This means that if you bet the Bucks, that you can bet the Bucks will not beat the Bears by more than 86 points. Mm-hmm. And he says, listen, Tom Brady is great, arguably the best ever, but he's not going to beat the Bears by 86 points. The promotion is meant for Bear fans to give points bet a try and win with a no-brainer bet to start out. Yeah. The 86 points actually comes from the uh, 1986 Super Bowl when the Bears last won the Super Bowl. So it's a, a promotion plus 86 with the Bears. So you just have to. So I was like, well, they almost got me on this, but I don't feel like, you know, the I don't want to. I didn't get a chance to see what the fine print was. Like, yeah. limit. First of probably, all, there's got to be a limit yeah, on it. Because you could bet $100,000. Probably like it. 20 to 50 bucks, That's maybe 100 I th- tops. I was thinking 100 might yeah. be the limit. But what a Because cool, it is free money. Yeah, I thought, getting. I was like, you know what? Kind of a cool promotion. Yeah. It's a new sports book. They're tied in officially with the beer, with the Bears, so it's not like some offshore sketchy deal. And I was like, man, it's free money tonight if you it wanted, is. if you wanted to open up an account with them. But I don't know if you have to live in Illinois, that type of deal. You know, what if we come in tomorrow and it's ninety-two to three <laughs> bucks? <laughs> We're just eighty-seven. Yeah, I mean that would be <laughs> incredible. Yeah, uh, but so eighty-six <laughs> point spread. So right. that, that's their point spread. You could take. I cannot find that line, Troy. Uh, my bookie doesn't have that <laughs> one. So uh, dang, I, I'm missing out on that opportunity. Yeah. So I, I thought that is a really cool that's idea, a good idea and a great promotion. To get people, if you were trying to get somebody involved, you know, for for a uh, try. Here's, it's always nice when game. your team blows out another team a stress-free win. Same for betting. When you have a yes. stress-free bet yeah. out there, Troy. Yeah. And a lot of people will have that tonight. So I thought you'd like that one. If you went to the game, so this is in Illinois, you could have actually 
Possibly. I wonder if it's mobile. Yeah. Like, you could probably download it to your phone. Yeah, I don't know if you have to have an Illinois address. Like, I'm not sure, though. Or do you have to just be in the area? I've right. always wondered about I, that, too. That I'm not sure about. Like, my wife's uh, family is from Jersey, and it's like, it's 30 minutes from Philly, something like that. It's uh-huh. very close. So, you know, it's it's legal now. The Barstool Sports app. Correct. The gambling app. Yeah. You can download it, place bets. So, if I just, like, cross into their, their and doesn't know where my Wi-Fi is coming yeah. from and can I place a and bet? And a lot of it's where you're at. Like, obviously, you can go to Vegas and, and yeah. go to a sports bar and, totally, and bet all you want on anything. You know, But with the where, apps specifically, yeah. it's about where you are. I think it's location. state by state is yeah. making those decisions now. So. so it's becoming, it's kind of like, you know, legalizing marijuana. More and more states are approving it. Definitely. And I think yeah. sports gambling is, is going down that path, too. All right, for the first time since 2001, the Atlanta Braves are in the... Well, still one out to go, Clip. I guarantee they get this out right here. Because this is behind. Oh, it sure is. <laughs> yeah. I saw Congratulations. It the they are in the NLCS. To the Atlanta Baseball Club. Oh, no. Did they take Braves away while I wasn't looking? Uh, it's just a trendy thing to do. Yeah, so. apparently so. Uh, the Dodgers probably going to be their opponent, and that will not be easy. Dodgers trying to wrap up their series with the Padres tonight, but the Braves have done it. Uh, first Se- appearance in the NLCS since 01. 7 nothing. They just killed them today. A blowout. Great yeah. uh, series. A sweep for Atlanta over the Marlins. Boy, and the cardboard cutouts are going crazy right now. <laughs> that they are. In Houston, of all places. Yeah. Atlanta, Miami, and Houston with cardboard cutouts. That's what sports is these days, Troy. Yeah, I'm over the cardboard cutouts, quite yeah. honestly. I just I think that the novelty of that is worn off, and I can do without it. Well, there will be some fans in the stands in Tampa coming up this Saturday. Yes. They'll have... About uh, 10,000 or so. Yeah. Uh, and Morgan Aylers will be uh, one of those fans. Uh, let's hear from Donnie Kirkpatrick, Shirley, and uh, cut four. He was asked how he can open up the offense a little bit more. You know, I don't know, throw it more than 50 times in a game? I, I don't know. Can we throw it more than 50? I guess we can. I think I've thrown it 60 some before, but it, we wouldn't like to throw it more than 50. We had 29 completions. You know, that's a lot of completions. So um, the first game, we ran the ball well. You know what I'm saying? We ran, you know, the ball really well. If we don't fumble it, it would have been a tremendous day. And then if we don't have two penalties downfield, and one of them a late hit, which was crazy, and then another one, you know, was a holding call, which maybe he held the guy. You know, that's that's one of those things. We ran the ball well. So what we got to do this week is we can't let that game beat us twice. You know, Sunday, I, I was pretty down. And you know I'm saying uh, Monday, I still, you know, kind of have my jaw out of place a little bit. Even Tuesday – you know, I was still pretty pretty down about it. Today kind of got us going again. We can't let that – we can't say, well, we can't run the ball, we can't do this just because we didn't do it to one game. We can run the ball. We will run the ball. Uh, we'll take our shots. We'll be we'll be open. I don't – we don't care if we throw it or run it. You know, we just want to do it well. It kind of depends on what the defense is giving you a little bit. And uh, the first game, Central Florida was a lot more concerned about the passing game than they were the run game. So the run was more there than the, the passing. Somebody, I think, had asked me, I think Clip had asked me about, you know, late in the game, you, you were running it in the fourth quarter. Well, the fourth quarter, I, I don't know that we had much of a chance to win the game. They were playing the pass. They were two safeties deep. So why not run it? You're going to make more yards running it than you were throwing it at that point. Um you know, Saturday, I think going in, they said, okay, they're a pretty good running team. We got to stop the run. They had the box loaded. And, you know, we, we, we did try to establish the run early because the defense at that point wasn't playing very well. They played really well in the second half, but they weren't stopping them. So you've got to give them a break. You can't go out there and keep going three and out and just wearing them down until they can make their adjustments, which Coach Harrell and those guys did an unbelievable job then of getting that. But, but you got to find a way to give them a chance to, to do that. So – you know, you don't want to just totally get away from your game plan. Uh, you still got enough time when you're when you're down that early. But you know, there was a point in the second half where we probably didn't run it very much. You know, we, like say we were, we were we were throwing it almost every snap there. If we could have hit the big throws, a couple of big throws there, uh, we would we would really had a shootout there with them. Even though we were way behind early, I think. Donnie Kirkpatrick there, uh, and and that's a classic line from from the coordinators. You know, what are you going to do, run or pass? Well, it depends on what their defense is yeah. doing, and uh, that's kind of the, the the deal there, Troy. Got a shout out to 
you clip yeah. on that one too. Okay. I did ask him about that. Why, why they ran so much towards the end, and I guess he felt the game was already out of hand. So and he explained it. Yeah, wanted to get his guys some work, and also yeah. wanted to keep the clock rolling and, and everything there. So, uh, what will the attack be this week? We shall see. I will say, if there's a strength, you want to talk. Go back to your sandwiches, Troy D. Um, what was the uh, what was the defense in the analogy there? Well, I think we were uh, with the peanut butter and jelly. Yeah, who was peanut remember. butter and who was jelly? Uh, I guess that you know you, this is a good uh, this is a good one. Which one would you want it to be? Because you want the defense to stick. So would you have it be peanut butter? Yeah. Or the offense be jelly because you need that to be smooth and have it run efficiently. Okay. So I kind of think it's jelly a little more. Although peanut butter could be smooth, but oh boy. I'm going to go peanut butter's the defense, okay. jelly's the offense, special teams is the bread. Right now, South Florida is just a pile of peanut butter, I think. The defense is their strength. They lack jelly, and last week they didn't have any bread because yeah. they gave up a kick return for a touchdown. Yeah. Uh, point being, they if they do have a strength, it would be on the defensive side. Yeah. So, All right. Uh, hold. And, and that peanut butter can get sticky at times, so you got to be careful. You a crunchy or creamy guy? Uh, definitely smooth smooth yeah uh-huh. All right. what about you i could go either way uh but i would say if i had to choose i would go creamy smooth yeah no. i mean i know peanut butter is obviously made out of peanuts but i don't want peanuts in my peanut butter does that make sense it does yeah i, I kind of like a I crunch every now and i don't then, want but... nuts in my peanut butter all right yeah Ask i like answer. it smooth shirley crunchy or creamy people want to know it's creamy all day long all right chandler Crunchy or creamy peanut butter? Creamy. Wow. It's across the board. Rarely do we agree. Sweet. I mean, we're all so different here, yet sometimes we're all the same. <laughs> and that's what I love about us here. What unites us is stronger than what divides us. We are creamy peanut butter people. <laughs> and, peanut and we butter. found that out with peanut butter. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. brought us all together. Sometimes it's, you just need one decision like that, Chandler. You make one decision. And then it makes other good decisions. A lot of inspirational stuff happening on this program today. Uh, all right, back to football. And it, it, Holt Naylor's did look down on himself after the game. And uh, yeah. kind of maybe the lowest we've seen him. I as think a so. And, 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 it's, it's, as we said, look, we're big Holton fans. Uh, we know him well. He, I mean, heck, his dad has a longtime partnership relationship with us. We, we know the whole family. Uh, we want Holton to succeed. I mean, so... It's tough when you know someone personally and, and, and the team's struggling or he's struggling and you have a personal relationship with them. So, I, I, but I did notice that this week. And it's also I, not fair for us to like pretend he's playing perfect. Right, you correct. know what I mean? Like, we right. have to be can honest. I, can he's I sh- not played his best. Correct. Yeah. So, it, we can't just sugarcoat things. Yeah. And just because he's a great kid and yeah. does all the right things, act like everything's fine either. But I, I do agree with you, Clip. I think he probably harder on himself than he's ever been and probably more down uh, as far as the way things are going. And I don't want to say it's all his fault either. You know, I mean, there's a number of things that can be fixed that they're working on. It's not just a quarterback situation. Well, so, and, and hopefully he gets a chance to show, you know, when we've seen what he's capable of in the past so hopefully we're going to see that saturday donnie was asked about that and you know was that the the, his lowest uh point i guess as a pirate after that game on saturday i I agree with you that's the that's the most i've seen uh after the game affect him he he really i thought was was low he was really crushed and you know he, he had he had his deal he, he played 80 plays in a game, and he had 75 really good plays, and he had five really bad plays. And the two, the three interceptions, the one really was not his fault. The two were. They were really just, just bad decisions. And he's pressing because when we get behind or we're struggling, he just feels like, I need to do something. I need to put the team on my back. Well, you want guys like that, but you got to do it in the right way. You can't then go just make up something. And he just made two really bad decisions where they were both on first down. That's what kills you. It's first and 10. You don't have to force it on first and 10. You got two more downs to make 10 yards. And, and you know what? We're, we've been in a lot more four down mode too. The game has changed I and mean, it's becoming a four down game. And so we're, we've really been talking about that. So he's got to quit doing that. Sometimes you got to throw one away on first down. If it's not there, every play's not going to work every time. And uh, the one was an RPO. He should have handed it off. The other one was just routes were covered. He tried to make something up. Uh, so uh, he he was really down, I thought, on Sunday as well. 
I thought saw him on Monday. He was kind of coming back. I think Coach Houston's done a good job with him of, uh, you know, covering for, for him. I, I, I'll be honest with you, I, I do live in a cave. I don't know what's going on for the most part uh, out there. Uh, they built a store between my house and here, and I didn't even know it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's because it's dark when I come. It's dark when I go home. Uh, but I, obviously, he's been getting beat up, I guess. I, that's to be expected. He knows that. Uh, you know, we, we all know that. All of us in this business understand that. As we tell them all the time, you know, they don't love you. You know, they just love what you do. Anyhow, trust me, they don't hate you. They don't even know you. They just hate what you did. There were a couple of plays because we didn't win. And I, I think he's bounced back just from some support. The teammates, he's had a lot of teammates, I think, have rallied behind him, you know, and kind of given him, you know, that support too. So uh, he'll be determined. I, he had an unbelievable practice today. Normally, if you practice well, you play well. Let's hope that'll be the case this weekend. I thought Donnie Kirkpatrick making some great points clip, uh, really kind of breaking down the situation where Holt Nailers is um, mentally. But also, and I, I think this is a big part of it, physically, he took a beating that last game. And, and Georgia Southern was all over him. Uh, and, and, Georgia State. I'm sorry, Georgia State. Georgia State, Georgia Southern, Georgia, you know what I'm saying. Um, Georgia State was all over him. And he took a lot of hard hits, man. And, and there were a couple times where I'm like, God, I hope he's okay, like physically. So on top of the losing and having a few bad plays, the physical beating that he took in that game was pretty big. And that takes a toll on you as a quarterback. Yeah, and uh, that's kind of part of the the O-line struggles right now uh, with what we're seeing with this team. And uh, he he said that he had 75 good plays, but those five bad plays kind of overshadow any good that you do uh, as a quarterback. That's just the way it is because uh, those bad ones are so much more noticeable, especially when they're turnovers. So, got to get help uh, in front of him with the line and his – you know, his, his workmates there at the skill positions. And, and got to have a big C.J. Johnson effort. We played the cuts earlier, and Donnie thinks that he's he's in a good headspace this week and that these DBs have been getting physical with him with the idea of they're not going to call pass interference every play. Yeah. So let's put the onus on the refs to make the call. They they called it three times on Saturday. Donnie said there should have been two or three more. Uh, but CJ's got to play through that. He's a marked man. That's what good re- happens to good receivers. I agree. He's going to have to be a factor in this if East Carolina's going to have success on the offense. And he, he's you know and look, Holt's got to do his job, get the ball to him, and then CJ's got to you know catch it and, and make make some make something happen after it. All right, let's take our final time out. We'll come back. Get ready to wrap up a Thursday edition of Pirate Radio Live. We're back with you after this. Hey, Pirate Nation, this is Tom Brown from Brown and Wood Cadillac. We've been serving the Pirate Nation in eastern North Carolina for 83 years. We have four brands, three generations, two showrooms, and one goal to make sure you leave a happy customer. This month at Brown and Wood, get an all-new 2020 Cadillac Escalade and save over $13,000 off. As always, Brown and Wood is the home of the lifetime warranty. We're located on Greenville Boulevard next to the Convention Center or shop us online at brownandwoodauto.com. Hidden phone trade-ins, hidden plan requirements, hidden catches. You won't find them at U.S. Cellular because we speak fair. Plus, when you switch right now, you can get $500 off the latest phones. Upgrade to fair. Upgrade to U.S. Cellular. Requires new postpaid service plan, new line port, and credit approval. Qualified smartphone purchase and comes via monthly bill credit on a 30-month RIC. Taxes, fees, and additional terms apply. This is Brandon Tate, owner and operator of Atlantic Wireless, an authorized agent for U.S. Cellular since 1997. Visit AtlanticWireless.com to find the store near you. We go beyond the call. Banking is banking until service is not the same. This is Eric Clark from Select Bank and Trust, and this year has been unusual, but we have continued to focus on what has always been important to us, our customers. When businesses needed access to the Paycheck Protection Program, our team of local bankers worked around the clock to successfully keep our customers open and their employees working. Wouldn't you like to deal with a bank that is responsive to your needs, can make local decisions, and cares about you, the customer? We are Select Bank and Trust. Bank local, bank select. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Hey guys, are you tired of tagging along with your wife or your girlfriend when you need a pedicure or manicure? Do you feel intimidated being the only guy in a female nail salon? If so, then I have the solution for you. The Man Cave is now open. I'm Amanda and I've opened the Man Cave to give men a spot just for them and for their grooming needs. Come relax in our comfortable masculine atmosphere and enjoy some free drinks and snacks during your nail service. The Man Cave, next to Lighting by Design on Fire Tower Road in Greenville. 
UBE and PirateWear.com are proud to offer the Pirate Nation its largest inventory ever. Brand new Adidas is arriving daily, along with Under Armour, Columbia, and Russell Athletic. UBE is loaded with cargo, and new items are being added daily to PirateWear.com. Be sure to check out our children's store, The Crow's Nest, for all of your young pirates. UBE and PirateWear.com, an ECU tradition for 50 years. Go Pirates! The Rick House is Eastern North Carolina's premier American-styled restaurant and bar. Join us at the Rick House for mouth-watering steaks and the best burgers around. Check out the spicy mahi risotto or the bourbon pecan salmon. Wednesday night is date night. Two salads, an appetizer, a bottle of wine, two entrees, and a dessert for just $55. Thursday is ladies night with $5 martinis and special apps. The Rick House, American provisions and spirits. 710 Red Banks Road beside the bowling alley in Greenville. The Rick House. BMS Builders is your premier custom builder in eastern North Carolina. With Blackwood and Mills Creek in Greenville, Dalton's Cove in Farmville, and Belmar in Aden, these are just a few of the developments featuring BMS Builders Homes. They can build the home of your dreams. Just ask Dr. Dennis Ross in Greenville or East Carolina football coach Mike Houston. They built their homes, and they can build yours as well. BMS Builders. Give them a call at 916-1578 for BMS Builders. Hey, Pirate Nation, this is proud ECU graduate and former baseball player Brandon Manning inviting you to join my team at Farm Bureau Insurance. Right now, during hurricane season, is a good time to review your coverage with a local trusted agent like me. I will make myself available before or after business hours, and my clients always have my cell phone number if they need anything. From home, auto, or life, give me a call today and let's talk about your insurance coverage and about the Pirates. Call 531-1812 and go Pirates! Hey everybody, this is David Glenn, and you're listening to my favorite station in Eastern North Carolina, Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to Hour 3 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour of PRL is brought to you by Bud Light. Reminding Pirate fans to stay in the game and drink responsibly. Bud Light, the official beer of the ECU Pirates and proudly distributed by Carolina Eagle Distributing since 1989. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. Guys, you cannot impress the ladies with that sloppy, unkept look, and that goes for you married guys, too. Time to get to the Man Cave in Greenville, the premier destination for professional management pedicures, pedicures, and hair services for men only. Enjoy a cold beverage, a snack, and let the professionals make you look your best. Visit mancaveandnails.com and book your appointment today. The Man Cave, now open on the corner of Fire Tower and Evans. Now let's head back in to Pirate Radio Live. Here's your host, Clip Brock. Troy, didn't you say recently you were going to head there one weekend for your boys? Yeah, they got a haircut, and I'm uh, considering getting a uh, pedicure there. Okay, you know, got to keep the feet looking good. But like, uh, were there like games on and yeah, stuff yeah, they got on? TV. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, they got it's uh, they got pool tables. They got plenty of like food and adult beverages. Sweet. Yeah, full bar. Like I mean, it's it's a cool spot. If you have, it's right next to Lighting by Design on Fire Tower Road, and it's then in that Greenville Winterville mm-hmm. vortex. You know, there's that mythical line between Greenville and Winterville, like. That it's a Greenville address, but they consider it Winterville, but it's really Greenville. You know, there's that no man's land mm-hmm. and fire tower, and uh, that's right where they're at. That's the corner of Evans Street and Fire Tower. There you go, basically. But right. yeah, it's a cool spot, guys. If you're and a lot of guys don't like, they do care about their nails and stuff, and they don't want to go with their wives to all these girls. Like if you go to the girl salon, it smells like the nail stuff, and then all it's all the women are staring at you there. This is just for guys. So you don't have to be you don't have to worry about it. There you go. You know, it's kind of cool. It's like a clubhouse for dudes that you can get your hair cut and you can get your nails done, whatever. Awesome. So yeah. I like it. Troy D. All right. ECU, South yeah. Florida. How about this? I told I did the math twice on this clip because I was stunned. And I wanted to make sure I didn't make a mistake. I, I, I felt this was gonna be, and I still feel this is gonna be a close game. And I almost took as you know, in the Zoom call, I almost took USF, but the last minute I'm going, you know what, I'm going to go ECU. I think they could pull it out, but I, I'm kind of torn either way. So this is the average of the scores. So Weaver took USF 31-27. I took ECU 
Bailey took ECU 25-24. Medor took ECU 31-27. You took South Florida 31-23. When I average the scores, ECU's average, we come to 28.8. Okay. South Florida, 28.6. Wow. So that is how close I think this game could be that we have it as almost a statistical tie through us guessing the score. There you go. And that would be 56 points, correct? 28, 28. And the total is 55. So yeah. we're like, we're all over it. Yeah. So as I say, these are experts. The over under. What you do with this is. information is up to you. I'm just providing it to you. Yeah. So we'll see. So I guess we are. I, I called for a one score game. We all did, I yep. believe. So, uh, and you know what, Troy? I, either way, I hope it is. Don't you want to be in a fourth quarter with the game on the line where you have to actually watch it? We, yeah, I mean, we, we have seen so many games where it's over at halftime. Yeah. That it, you just check out. I'd settle for a check out game if East Carolina's the one <laughs> checking them out. Like they're you know the what? Winning. I would like that too. I would, if we were ahead by twenty points a half, I'd be okay with that. But yes, it would be exciting to see it come down to a finish and ECU finishes a game. Yeah, and starts to learn how to win, as Mike Houston said. This team doesn't. They still need to learn how to win. Yeah. It, uh, unfortunately, and he inherited a lot of this. It is a losing culture right now. They've got to turn that losing culture around. And start to learn how to win, and it comes with you know doing it in practice, and then translating well, that to the game. It's easier said than done, as we've mentioned multiple times. You know what Rick Smith says: winning is winning a habit. is a habit. So is and it. unfortunately, yep. so is losing. That is indeed. That's a good Rick Smith right there. We'll get some words of wisdom from Coach Smith coming up Friday on Pirate Radio Live at four o'clock. Great. Steve and I go going to join me as well. Great segue. Looking forward to that. And uh, he'll be on the fifth quarter Saturday night, Troy D, after the game, right here on Pirate Radio. Look forward to it. Enjoyed it. Good luck to your Bears tonight. Thank you. Uh, I'll be back with you Monday in the 5 o'clock hour. Going to bring uh, Cliff Godwin with us from ECU Baseball. Awesome. Good stuff. Looking forward to that on Monday. All right, folks. uh, Chandler, great job. Shirley Rhodes, great job as always. And we will see you guys Friday, 3 o'clock, for an all-new edition of Pirate Radio Live. So long, everybody. Thanks for listening to Pirate Radio Live, an exclusive presentation of the voice of the Pirate Nation.